Nathan? No, Trevor? Of course. All right, we'll call the meeting to order. The first item on the agenda is the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. Thank you all. The next item on the agenda is acceptance of minutes. I have sent to Valerie just two typographical changes, which she will, I imagine, make. I'll make a motion to accept the minutes. I'll second that. Motion and seconded. <clears throat> all of those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous. Thank you. Next item on the agenda is a uh, continuing public hearing for uh, 197 mm -hmm. High Street. Uh, there's com uh, communication from the attorney of record uh, asking for this to be withdrawn without prejudice. Is there a motion? There's actually, is there a discussion? No, I make the motion that they continue it. It's to be withdrawn, Alan. Oh, they're uh, they're th pulling it entirely. I make a motion. A motion to allow the withdrawal? Yeah, I make a motion to allow the withdrawal. Is there a second? Um, I thought it was continued to um, June 12th. It's not. He, it's not withdrawn. He, it's but it's. He gave a, me a. He gave me a withdrawn. He wants to continue to yeah. June. Yeah. All right. So it's yeah. continued. It, all right. Continue. I I beg your uh, I beg your pardon. The the correspondence that uh, I got just said uh, withdrawn <laughs> with prejudice, without prejudice. Huh. In any event, all right. So con is there a, is there a motion to continue to June twelfth? I make a motion to continue it. Second. I'll second that. <clears throat> Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Unanimous approval. Next item on the agenda is 1717 Turnpike, and continued public hearing of 1717 Turnpike Street. Good evening, and the, the floor is yours, if you'll remind us all. Yeah. Philip Christensen, uh, as engineer for the applicant. We also have here tonight uh, Ernest uh, DeMeo, and he's the architect. He'll present the architectural drawings for the project. We've made some changes in this since the hearing. We listened to what you had to say. Uh, one of the big changes is the parking's been removed from the rear of the property. If you remember our original plan, we had parking in the back. Um, the building slightly smaller, but what we did was we moved the parking, I mean, moved the building from that direction. So originally we were trying to stay inside the normal zoning for the area, uh, the setbacks, the normal setback requirements, uh, not considering the extra 15 feet uh, because it abuts a residential neighborhood. But in order to get the parking out of the back, we needed to slide the building to the side. So what we've done is we have to, in, increase the uh, variance request on that uh, left side of the property. So it's down to uh, 18 feet. But we do have 12 parking spaces, the handicap space, uh, building 65 by 40. Uh, as we mentioned, originally we cannot meet the 100 foot setback from the street because the lot's only 100 feet deep. Uh, and uh, the setback requirement, as you know, is an additional 15 feet to all the setbacks, uh, front side and rear, if you abut a residential. Uh, we abut residential in the rear only, not on the sides. Uh, but building inspector says that applies to the entire property, not just the rear where the residential is. So uh, that's basically the pro project. What, one of the things we did here, too, was we wanted some landscaping. And the real uh, issue on the landscaping is really 
screening for the neighbors in the back. So we're proposing to put Arbor Vitae along the back side of the property, uh, space 10 feet on center, and uh, fast growing trees and to screen this building from the residential area behind it. Uh, I'm sorry, I may have missed the detail. What, uh, what's going to be planted? Uh, Arbor Vitae, you said? And the, uh, the intention is, how, how big are the Arbor Vitae going to be at construction? When they come in, they're about six feet. And then they grow from there, obviously. We'd like to show you the uh, building design and get, get a feel of what the facade of the building would be like. If Ernest could come up and uh, show you that. Good evening. My name is Ernest DeMeo. I'm the owner of Tectonics Architects in Salem, Mass. We're the architects for the project. The um, proposed structure uh, is, uh, uh, it varies in height from the front of the building to the back of the building. The rear elevation of the building has a height. The roof slope actually comes down from the front towards the back, and we're 14 and a half feet all on the residential side of the building. So we're essentially one story on the back side or the residential facing side of the building. On the street side of the building, the building is uh, two stories on the front, and that's mainly to have some storage space on the upper level. The, the head height on the second floor goes from zero on the second floor in the back uh, up to about 12 and a half feet on the front of the building. The, Building is comprised of mostly transparent um, retail on the ground level with some awnings, a few signs uh, strategically placed over the entry, and some signs proposed on the end wall of the building. There's a central stair that's accessed from the back of the building that goes up to the storage level. Um, utility mechanical spaces are in the back of the building and is mostly glazed along the front and the side of the building. Um, we are envisioning the materials, the primary materials, to be very simple, almost a stucco-like finish on the, on the uh, Turnpike Street elevation and turning the corners, and then a simple, almost residential siding along the sides in the back of the building. And Happy to discuss. Okay, um, I no, I don't think you're allowed to uh, that many signs. So did you look at our bylaw? And actually, are you taking the sign that's there now, which is an internally illuminated illuminated sign? Well, um, to address some of your questions, um, I'm not sure about I I'm I don't think we're doing an internally illuminated sign. Well, that's what's there now. Okay. Um, but Which in reference there. in reference to the signage in the area, I think one one does an examination of the signage immediately adjacent to us at the gas station, and also in the other retail buildings immediately adjacent. They could be grandfathered. You're a new application. Did you look at our sign bylaw? I, I don't think you can put that many signs on one building. Okay. So you need to review the bylaw. Okay, we will do so. Yeah. While we're on the subject, I will talk about massing and signage for the buildings in the neighborhood. So they're already green. If they are, they're grandfathered, they got a permit, you don't know. May I, may I please? Sure. Okay. Thank you. Uh, the existing site is here. This is our immediate neighbor, the gas station. There's a sign at the gas station that's existing that's four foot wide by 13 foot high, seven feet in the air. We know because we measured it. The, the sign letters are 16 inches high. There's 52 square feet of signage on each side of the sign. There's 104 square feet of signage on this particular sign. That's not including any of the signs that are on the buildings or on any of the pumps. The other retail buildings in the immediate area, so here's our site in plan. Here are some of the retail buildings that are immediately in the vicinity, let's say. This is 1812 Turnpike Street. 
Um, the sign bands are taller with larger letters than what we're proposing with much larger signage area than what we're proposing. We have on our particular project a total of 84 square feet of signage with 18 inch high letters. Um, the gas station signage is 104 in this one sign and we didn't add the areas of the signage on the other parts of the gas station but obviously it's a larger number than that. At um, 1820 Turnpike Street, and this approximate length is the length of the building that we're proposing here. This is about 58 feet, and we're just slightly larger than that. They have 150 square feet, square feet of sign on this one piece of the building, and all of the signs are on two-foot sign bands. So there's essentially, there's more than twice the signage area that we're proposing on this particular building, which was fairly recently constructed. <coughs> grandfathered or not, I don't know the answer to that, but this is a new building, and the signage here is much larger and much more extensive than what we're proposing. Um, in terms of the heights of some of the projects, this building, the top of the ridge, which we measured by laser, is approximately 35 feet in height to the ridge, which is about 8 feet taller than what we're proposing on the building that we're showing you tonight. The existing 1812 Turnpike Street it's about 30 feet in height, so it's about two feet taller than the building that we're proposing tonight. Again, more signage on each of these buildings than we're proposing. And even in terms of the residential buildings that are in close proximity to the site, we have uh, three homes that are sort of the immediate abutters to the site. Um, building two on this is actually shown here. That's 15 Colonial. The top of the ridge on that house is 29 feet actually put taller than the highest point of our building. Uh, the top of the ridge of 10 Colonial is approximately the same elevation, 28 feet, as to the building that we're proposing on the front. And 30, uh, 20 Colonial has a ridge height of 31 feet to the top of their ridge. The point, the point of this is not necessarily to um, uh, criticize somebody neighbors, it's more or less to show the scale of the building that we're proposing in the context that we're proposing. And also, as one drives along 114 and passes these resident, uh, retail properties, what you're encountering in terms of scale of buildings, which all of them are larger, the scale of signage, all of which is more extensive than what we're proposing. Now, we will go back and obviously- You're gonna have to. Um, so I'm assuming that those buildings, which had actually probably have scale of building to scale a lot, might, right. might be very different from here. I'm sure those have gone through the planning board with a sign planage that you're not citing. That could have had a variance on that sign. It's a gas station, which required different signage. Um, so you, you're going to need to, it's not my responsibility to look at the sign Absolutely. by, well, you're, you know, if, you, if you're having that many signs, you need to present. Right, well, we have four. We, we don't have many, we have four. We have two on the front of the building because there are two retail spaces. Which might be two more than you can, that are allowed. But we have two retail spaces, so obviously each retail is allowed to have a sign on the front mm -hmm. of the building. So no matter what the zoning ordinance says, each Correct. retail is allowed to have a sign on the front of their building. So the question is whether or not we're allowed to have a sign on the side of the Correct. building, which we'll determine. So, um, but, Obviously, if you have a retail building, you're allowed to have a sign over your entry. Externally illuminated. With that sign that we have right now, it's not going to be on that building. Just right. Sign here, that that right. sign is actually internally illuminated. So. Right, but that's not the sign that's going to be. Uh, it's just the same design. I'm, I was just yeah, pointing it out. It yep. 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 I get it. Um, my other question is now you're saying that you're 1180 square feet and these are both 1180 yes. so is that correct so it's gross yes because there there are elements that are on the on the utility side of the building that are not included within the retail footprint they're access from the back and not part the, of the retail the, what, Ellen, what Ellen is referring to is on the variance plan. It's, it says it's 1180. suggested that the, there's a four-chair salon and 1,180 1, gross square feet of retail. It's actually 2,360. Correct. For, so the, for each one of these retailers. But that's not this reflected, is not what we have. reflected here. 
That's our so that's, on, yeah. That's, it's always a challenge for us when the applicant comes in with an idea that's very from <laughs> that's, that's right. the stamp plans. I can assure you that the, the gross square footage of retail that we show on these plans, 1180 and 1180 is accurate. It's done on the computer. But the stamp plan is inaccurate is what we're determining, correct? Yes. Collectively, it's 2,360. And the site plan needs to show collectively the building, not the individual suites or units or stores. 1180 is have to determine the parking area. So one of the things on that is that the parking area on the square footage of the utilized space. So that's what the 1180 was used for to determine the parking area of the retail space. So what? I mean, the building itself is, we have 65 by 40, and that's the building. Is there enough parking? Is there what you're saying is you show that as a I'm total retail on the plan. Yeah. yeah. And it's double, it's double that number. Oh, okay. I, you can't, yeah. <laughs> yes. I, I was concerned about parking when I did that. So the four chairs is part of the parking requirement. So it should. Two, two spots per chair. And the 1180 is the gross square footage of the, uh, the retail space. And, and that requires, I think, three and a half per space. So if you look down below on the parking, salon, and office, you have four seats, two per seat is eight spaces, and office is 1180 times three and a half, down to four spaces. So that's the 12 spaces of parking. Area. Still confused. So I, I understand that number in the... So what is the accurate number? Well, I think what he's saying is that the number for the retail is correct. The 1180 for the retail is correct. But then there's the office component, which was not included in that square footage calculation. So, so what's the total square foot of the 2360. whole? 2360. Right? That's all I want to think. Well, we have, um, yeah, we have 1180 times 2. Yeah, yeah. 2360. Right. Don't make me do math. I used to calculate it. <laughs> do it all day long. Don't want to do any more. So can you just run by your variances again for me? So, I mean, it's 25 plus 15, and you have 23, but I'm seeing 18. I'm, I'm kind of I'm a little sorry. confused. I'm sorry, right. And plus, I need to do it myself. Thank you. Thank you. So we have the front offset. We don't meet, obviously. That's 100. We have 26. Side offset. If you take 25, add 15 to it. Uh, you're up to 40. We have 18 on the left side or the south side. Uh, we do comply on the right side or the north side <coughs> of the property. The rear requirement is 35 plus 15. Uh, we only have 36 feet. And obviously the lot area we don't have. The lot area is 25,000. And this is 15,000, the existing lot. So the only thing that this lot meets with the upper pole is building is the frontage. 
The only thing it meets. And the yes. Okay. But obviously, it's a grandfathered lot. <clears throat> The, the right side setback, that's that's met. That's 68 it, feet, yes. Which one? That's not right. That left side this, setback this, this is 18 met. feet. This side, that's that really abuts. Oh. A, a narrow, empty lot, too, right? It does. That's correct. Right. So it's not like it's abutting a street or something. It's no, abutting it's, an un, it's unbuildable a lot. A lot smaller than this one. Right. right. <coughs> Which we're trying to locate the owner to acquire it. No. Mm -hmm. Notice that you guys went to the uh, fire department. And yes. Okay. Good. Thank you. And just just a clue in the gallery. The fire fire department has indicated that they're uh, um, they've reviewed the building to be proposed by Mr. and Mrs. Bergados, and the access needs are met with this proposal. So you still have to do planning and conservation? What? Oh. Uh, no conservation, but no. we will have to file a site plan if we get this approval regarding the building. So the assignment should be with the planning board, not with us. Yes. Just we're not a, we're not asking for any variances on sign size this evening. But we couldn't accept that until it was reviewed. Okay. Any further questions from the board at this time? I don't think so. Nope. All right. Well, well, the only thing I have to say is, sooner or later, something is going to be proposed for this site. Nothing is going to meet what it should be because it's, because the lot is so undersized. Okay, and if we simply do not approve anything and just let it be vacant land, the town has had eminent dom uh, domain taking here. My personal opinion: the man has come back. I think with a very reasonable plan. Okay, I mean he's uh, addressed all the neighbors to the back. I know they they won't be happy. Okay, but he has a, you know a line of up of items. All the parking in the rear has been uh, gone. The parking faces the gas station, which, which has a multiple traffic in its own right. Right, with cars coming and going. Uh, I see the plan in front. Seems like a nice little plan. I mean. Obviously, I don't have to have my hair done. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, I don't see anything wrong with it, to be honest with you. I think it's a nice compromise for the for the a lot of land that's there, and it's compromising. Okay. The first plan was totally wrong. Okay, it was way way too busy. But I see that the corrections here, I and mean, the man is trying to make it work. Any questions? Good. Move on to public comment. All right, thank you. 
Is there anyone in the gallery that wishes to be recognized and speak? Sure. Come on up. Please just introduce yourself at the onset with your name and address, please. Good evening, everybody. I'm John Kendrick, Dr. John Kendrick. I, am, I live in that left-hand bottom uh, picture there, number 20, Colonial. We were the first people to move in uh, 21 years ago, and we taken joy in seeing how the neighborhood has developed into a very wholesome family uh, atmosphere. Uh, and uh, it's a safe place. And uh, so I'm here to vouch for the group who have a petition. Uh, over 40 people signed a petition. Though you said the neighbors would not be happy, and you're absolutely right. So we are opposed to this, uh, but we need more information uh, before I read what the um, opposition points are. Uh, I'm just curious. Um, the building, the um, uh, the businesses who ultimately go in there, will they have to have some licensing from some place? And it's like, is it, do you guys do that licensing, or does somebody else do it? Or if we approve this, if this group approves it, uh, does that end any restrictions on, on what could be put there? Well, the, I think I'm hearing a, a couple of questions in there. Okay. Is, is whatever, I think the first question was, uh, whatever businesses are become tenants or occupants in these uh, commercial spaces, will they need to be licensed? Yes. And I think the answer to that question is, if the state or the town requires that the business be licensed, then the answer is yes. If there are no li such licenses required, then the answer would be no. Okay, so where does that request uh, or that debate take place? In other words, let's say Before somebody wants to put in a, a pot store. Yep. We don't think that's going to happen. But just a good example, classical example. Sure. Uh, what board reviews that to, to make a decision whether it's good for the what, Whatever board thing. has authority over that particular licensor. It's, cer it's certainly not this board. But I think the second part of your question is, if by virtue of this application and if this board grants the variance, then does that negate all obligations to get licensed? Yes. The answer is no. Okay. All business licenses would still be fully in play. The applicant, the applicant would have to satisfy all authorities. Okay. Thank you. Certainly. All right. I, uh, I just want to also add, okay. by right, there's certain businesses that can go in there by our bylaw, which is yes. determined by the bylaw, not okay. by this board. All right. So. Okay. So anyway, uh, the neighbors have been upset for several weeks, and they came to the last meeting, but there wasn't time to hear their concerns. So they've asked me to raise some concerns with you, and frankly, some of it is kind of like an legalese, so I, I don't, I'm not sure I understand all of it, but they've kind of elected me to make the presentation, if you will. Um, and some of the information may be dated because we've gotten some new information tonight, but let's, I have some questions for them. Uh, is it true that the petitioners are not the legal owners of the subject property? I think the answer to that is yes. Did you want to write them down and we've, have we've got um, all this? And then if you go by them, and then you can have the applicant answer them for you. I don't think the it's for this board to answer your. Um, you can rebuttal on it. Enough, yeah. To me, I don't see a big deal with that. The folder, we have the authorization. Right. He has an he has the authorization to apply. Okay. And I'm sure his purchase and sale agreement, the purchase his land, is contingent upon him getting the okay for the building. I understand. Okay. okay. That's so, so let's not get lost with any okay. gobbledygook per se. Okay. okay. Um, the second point that the group raised, and remember now they are amateurs living in this, in the town, in that beautiful neighborhood, and so they don't always understand all these things, but they try to put their questions together. So the second one is uh, the petitioner's request for a variance from the applicable zoning laws doesn't that violate the intent of the statute and pose a significant safety hazard? No. Anybody else? I don't think that you're, are you asking this board or are you asking the applicant to answer these questions? I'm, I'm just curious. I guess we're asking the board. You're asking the board to answer their questions? Yeah. But your answer is no. For requesting a variance is not a, a, a public hazard, no. Okay. Uh, 
Another one is the petitioner's request for a variance from the applicable zoning laws proposes a master plan unsuitable for the property and that it does not meet the 100 foot setback. Looks like you handle that. Right, that's been, I heard that discussion. So that 100 foot uh, variance has been uh, approved by this group or will be. Is that what you're saying? No, 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 no variance. Nothing has been approved yet. Oh, thank you. All right. Excuse me, can I interrupt you? In order to meet the 100 foot setback, Nothing could be there because the lot isn't a hundred feet wide. Uh huh. Okay. Okay. So without a variance, nothing could be granted there. Okay. Okay, because the lot is what ninety-one feet uh, wide, and the variance is a hundred feet. So simple arithmetic says it's an yes. eminent domain taking if there's not a uh, variance granted. Thank you. Uh, another one. Uh they want to know whether the petitioner's request for a variance from the applicable zoning laws includes a proposal to erect a st structure that is aesthetically undesirable and not in conformity with the surrounding architecture, affect, uh, adversely affecting the market value of surrounding residential structures. As, have, you, have you seen some of these pictures? Uh, the, the homes are beautiful. So the people who own them and their families are concerned. So. One of the issues they raise is, is this going to severely change the culture of the neighborhood? So that's one of the concern that's been raised, um, especially since we don't know what's going to go in there. Uh, let's see. Thank you. Yes, uh, the last point was, like I said, uh, this is a group of parents uh, who didn't quite know what to ask, but here's a, let's take another stab at it, and this is the last one. Uh, substantial equitable relief is available to the petitioners in the multiple available commercially zoned properties elsewhere on 114. So naturally they're saying, Gee, there's plenty of space other places. Why not have it someplace else? So those are the concerns. We have 40 signatures here. Uh, there's a lot of unrest in the neighborhood and, and people frightened about how the character of the neighborhood might change. Understood. Any questions? Anybody have any questions? Any questions? No. no. Thank you. No. Thank you. Sir. Thank you for the thoughtful presentation. <coughs> Yeah. My name is Lana Gill, and I live in 10 Colonial Avenue, um, first house on the left. So I will be directly affected by this building as I'll be looking at it. Um, you know, I, you know, I moved in six years ago, and at the beginning of the neighborhood, we have five children. Um, you know, running around, there's neighborhood kids all over the place. Um, you know, we really like how set back it is, the entrance. Um, I don't believe the builder intent to, for something to go there that close to the curb. I really, really beg you for not to approve the 18 uh, difference um, to the left of it. Um, it's just, as John mentioned, it's such a beautiful neighborhood. It will just change the entrance. We used to have a beautiful sign there. I think it just got knocked down by the weather. It, it was right where the proposed eight, you know, 18 difference is. Um, and it will just change the culture of the entrance with this building. Um, it, it's, a, it's a great community, um, you know, just, I spoke last time, we have such traffic issues. Um, I don't think anybody um, even can foresee this, but I, I mentioned before, sometimes I have five or six cars in front of my house trying to make that dangerous left. There's that extra lane in the middle of 
people not using it, you know, the turning lane to the gas station, they are not using it appropriately. I am just concerned this is too dangerous, this is too big, it is unacceptable. It is not a place for this. I, you know, I'm kind of speaking out for everyone because we, we have either little kids or bigger kids who are trying, you know, learning how to drive, making that left. There's that gas station, you know, is one of the cheapest gas stations in towns. There's lines out, you know, every pump, there's always cars lining up trying to wait for it. From every single side, it will not change. Everybody wants gas from that gas station. I, I appreciate that this is proposed and it looks, you know, maybe a little better for some people, but for us it doesn't. Um, there's, you know, there's a house right in the back of there that have kids and they will hear the noise, they will hear the garbage, they will hear, you know, everything. Um, they couldn't be here today. But I, I understand that the town, you know, might benefit from this because nothing else could go in. But why does something have to go in there? Because it, it's just not enough space. It is just too dangerous. Um, I, I would like to see traffic study, you know, planning board like Ellen mentioned that all this needs to be approved and e even so, like I'm just asking you guys not to approve it and I would like for you to drive around and see how, even within six years that I moved there, how much more increase to the traffic this, this place is with the Berry Street, with all everything that's going on around us. Uh, with ways everybody's cutting through a neighborhood, there's constant, you know, movement, and this is just going to bring more issues um, that I'm foreseeing. Um, I appreciate you hearing from us. Hi, good evening. My name is Caroline Castaldo. I also live on Colonial Avenue. Um, What's the address? Eighty-five. Colonial. Um, I appreciate what Alan said that something should go there. Um, firstly, I, I just think the whole presentation with the different buildings, all those buildings have 100 foot setbacks, so they're not on top of the road like this building is going to be. Extremely visible. Uh, again, I don't really, I think when you drive around other communities, the, I think the one thing, I've lived in North Andover for 30 years. The one thing that's disappointed me in our town is that I really don't think. We always give permits and variances to things that really fit where they should be. Other communities that are countryish, like North, like North Andover, they have buildings that fit appropriately and look, in, they fit into the community or the smat. I think we have a lot of situations, especially in our area presently, that have been built that really just the, they weren't thought out. They could have been different design or, you know, fit in a little bit more with the residential country type look that I think North Andover should have. So that disappoints me a little bit. I think this looks, you know, it, again, it looks very cosmopolitan. This area is not cosmopolitan. There used to be a riding academy there, nice open space. All of that's gone now, too. So I don't, I, my disappointment is in living in the, in the town as long as I have is that I just think we should try to keep it more aesthetically country pleasing and not go to, you know, mix all these different styles in one area. It's just, it, I think it degrades the community, it, it diminishes the home values, and I guess most importantly too, I'm concerned about the curb cuts. You've got the gas station with two huge curb cuts. You're gonna have another curb cut coming out onto 114. Our road coming left, coming right, Across the street, there's an empty Girl Scout building, good, good sized building. Something's going to go in there too. So I don't know. I, I hope that you can understand that all of that traffic merging into those lanes in 114 is, it's, I think it's an issue. I don't think that, you know, I don't think it's smart. And I appreciate, you know, that he brought forth Elizabeth Grady. You know, I've worked in that industry. So Elizabeth Grady is going to bring an esthetic, estheticians, a receptionist. These are all, right there, you probably have about five people that are going to park in those spots. They're going to work just in probably that business. So then you have hair stylists. You, how many spaces we have? Ten and two um, handicap. Those will be filled probably 
at least 50% or more by the employees of those two businesses. So then where is everyone else going to go? When the customers come in, where are they going to go? I don't know. I just think these are all things that we have to consider because we're trying to put something really aggressive on a spot that just I don't think can handle it. And, and maybe we should just be more selective and be patient and something else will come along that would better fit on that property. Uh, that's just, you know, what I would like to say. So just so the record, there's open positions. If you're, if you're not, I mean, that this is a volunteer and you can always yeah. sign up for a planning board. I, or, I, well, I would like to do that because yeah. that's just been, I have to be honest, I've, I've been in many different communities and mm -hmm. Sudbury and whatever, and those communities really tend to keep a theme. And it makes the whole um, Route 20 much more picturesque. It's not a bunch of mismatch of styles. You, you know, you, I'm sure you've all driven through communities like that. And I just think in our particular area, it's really become, it's, you know, I don't mind. I realized when I bought on, on Colonial Avenue that the, 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 um, the opportunity for commercial growth was going to be there. But I was, you know, hoping that, you know, you, we would keep to a style, just like on Route 28 in Andover now. If you've driven down there, they put the country store in. That country store blends in beautiful there. It's landscaped. It's, it looks residential. It's, it's a beautiful addition to that neighborhood. I would have no problem with something like that. But this is, it's too cosmopolitan. And it's too large. And I just don't think it fits with the style of the community. I, I just really don't. And I think that as a, as a town, we should really all be pro that. And you know, you know, make our town look the way we want it to. And I just think North Andover is more of a country community, in my opinion. And we are right near Harold Parker State Forest as well. So anyway, those are my thoughts. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, Judy Farris, 31 Oxbow Circle. Um, I have a number of points that I don't think have been brought up yet. And um, I do want to thank all of you guys for your time because I do realize you're volunteers and you, you have to kind of catch the flack from us citizens out here <laughs> trying to understand what's happening. And um, as John had said, we, we don't know this stuff, so we're trying to do our best to, to find something that will fit in this space. Uh, but so thank you for your time because this, this is a huge time commitment that you put forth. Um, just a couple observations, maybe a little bit redundant, but um, in in this stretch of 114, and with the just the, the town planning that's going on right now for our, our what is that called master, master plan. plan the master plan, you know when you look at that, and I've gone to those meetings, you know there's all those residents came out and they said what they want, you know, the look. And when you look at what's happening on our side of town, you know, maybe maybe people don't think about that as part of North Andover because we're so close to the Middleton line, I don't know. But there's there has been a change and I can um, just want to echo Carolyn's thing. There's that de development that's, um, I don't know, they're condominiums just kind of off the side Very line. Far. Not the Berry Farm. Like those are huge, and the setback. Merrimack condos. Yeah, the oh, <laughs> Merrimack condos. Uh, yeah, the Merrimack condos. I mean, those are like right on the street. So you can thank your state for that. Yeah, exactly. I figured <laughs> no. there's. I figured there was something on that, but but that area. That's where we live, right? And so there's a there's a change there compared to the rest of 114. And I think with that master plan and where we're at, we don't want to look like um, Danvers, right? We and I said this before the last building kind of reminded me of 7-Eleven. I have to say, this is a bit of an improvement, but now I think it kind of looks like a candy store. So, I, you know, that's again just my personal opinion. I, I also don't think it fits with the, the site. I want to make a comment on the two side lots that are entered into our building, and I brought um, a copy of our protective covenants for the neighborhood. And um, Cormier was the builder of that development, and it was his last development that he built, and he has since passed away. But it was his intent, and I'm a, an original owner, so I've, I've been in that uh, community for 20 years. But when he built it, he wanted it um, to look a certain way, right? He built, he put in all the upgrades in those houses. He, it was his kind of last hurrah. And he asked all the residents that were buying the property to keep the green spaces open and cut and taken care of. And so those lots that are that, that are on either side as you enter Colonial, those are meant to stay with the neighborhood. So they shouldn't be purchased and turned into some commercial development property, even though they're zoned that way. That was not his intent. 
We have our covenants that talk about the intent, and it scares me <laughs> beyond belief to think that a business could come in here and, and take this gentleman's hard work and um, the, the effort that he put in to create this development and just change that after he has passed. So that's a little concerning, and he's not a personal friend of mine. I just, I can feel that that was his last hurrah. And, um, and then on the same token, um, that was all his land, and he, and he decided to create that lot, right? The lot, I believe, that's, that doesn't meet the 100-foot sit-back. That's not conforming. And that was a hardship. Right, that, and I did a little bit of research on it. That was a self-created hardship that he created, as he built, broke down. And as my, as when I was reading this, and it's not necessarily North Andover, but just bad best practice. If a builder or a developer creates a self, um, a self-created hardship, then you, they're not supposed to get variances. And so this applicant is buying a self-created hardship, and it, and that transfers that self-created hardship as I understand it, transfers to whoever buys the property. So um, again, I'm not an attorney. I'm just reading things on the web. I'm reading things from attorneys. So um, sorry, I'm getting nervous. But, um, but anyways, I think that that's important, that if that's true, and I, I trust you guys are the experts in that, that if this builder created this non-conforming lot, and now the folks want to buy it and put something on it where they're asking for variances, they, they shouldn't be given a variance because it's a non-conforming lot and it was purposely created to be a non-conforming lot. Um, then these things may not be for, for you guys, but I think it's important to consider. They, you have a beauty salon, maybe, I don't know, pedicure, manicure place. Places that are going to be using water. We're all septic in that area. There is no space for septic on this land. And um, as I understand it, the, the sewer lines that come out that were put in there for the Pulte homes down the way, those are at capacity. So this is going to draw a lot of water. And again, I don't know that that's, that's probably the planning board. I don't know. But it's just another issue that if this gets approved, then they're going to go and they're going to ask again for more variances. And this is a posted size lot. And they're asking that 100-foot sit back is huge, I think, um, for what they're asking for. Uh, and then just again, if they're going to build on this lot, where are, the, where are those trucks going to go when they build? Where are they, where are gonna, where are they going to be? They're going to be on our street, which is going to cause more trouble for the turning and again, I know that probably doesn't go into consideration for your decision straight on variances, but it's an issue. It's a public safety issue. And I don't think that this property meets, meets that public safety. Um, and then I also just, I just had a question. They have signs on the building. And if they decided to try to put one closer to the street so people could see it, that would then block our, more fully block our view of being able to turn but they don't have that yet. Um, and then I would just also had a question. Have you guys ever um, granted a variance of this size to a non-conforming lot? Like, has that been done in North Andover that you guys are aware of? I, if I didn't work full time, I probably would have went and did the research. But I'm I just even, curious. I wouldn't even know where to start. Yeah. <laughs> so you have? You think you have? Uh, you know what? I, for me, just, I can tell you how I voted, and I've probably been on this board the longest. You're the senior member. Yeah, so yeah, 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 I, yeah. I look at each case individually yeah. and I can't say, well, you know, it's not a black and white decision that I make. Right. So I look at each one individually and if right. it, it has nothing to do with, well, I gave you 100 feet, no, I no, gave no, you no. 101. I was just curious if, if we as a town have ever I can't. I right, can't exactly. answer again. Yeah, no, 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 uh, I would probably say, you know, I don't know. I have no idea. You could run on vacation. So, and then I've the, been the on other thing by one time that, in 25 years. <laughs> the other thing that I'll say is that, um, as again, as I was reading up on this, that I, I thought that the the applicant that's applying for a variance has to show a hardship, and I'm not quite sure what the hardship is in this applicant's case. So I'm not sure that that has been stated. I know they want to build something bigger, but I don't, I don't think that, that that's been said. So if you guys understand what the hardship is, please share it with me because I'm... 
It's kind not of for us to that. determine. It's the applicant to determine but, for, to tell us. So they, right. can, they can tell us. But is that something you guys need to know before you vote, though? What the hardship is? Well, I, th I think it's awfully easy on its face. You can't build anything on this. So mm -hmm. to the to the extent you put a dog house on this, a four by four dog house, right. it's going to need a hundred foot variance. Yeah. You know, just just to kind of be colloquial about right, it. Right. Right. So is that? I mean, is I I would prefer the applicant to say that the hardship is the shape. I mean, in order to meet the a requirement of a variance, you need to prove soil shape, topography, and those are the requirements mm -hmm. of chapter. Eight or ten. Yeah. Uh, Forty. It's Forty-eight, thank you. <laughs> the attorney and So right. it's up to the applicant to prove the hardship to us as a board, not right. for us to determine it for them. Okay. All right. But that so um, hardship is not one of the concerns that you Absolutely. Have. They're applying oh, okay. for a variance. They have to prove to us there's okay. a hardship. Okay. All right. Okay. Um, and then uh, yeah, I don't know, I think I'll skip that. But, uh, So again, so I just, uh, yeah. So thank you again for your time, but I do think that the, they're trying to, I think I saw this at the Berry Street of Development. It's just way too big for this lot, whatever. It's, it, it, I just don't, I just, I'm just not understanding why with all the other properties that's available, with all the other vacant lots, why we have to try to give this 100 foot variance. And I, and I don't understand because I was trying to look at the pictures back there what the changes were on this, the side and the back um, variances. It sounds like maybe those have gone away, but um, I'm kind of finding that hard to believe that the set, they're meeting the setback for the, re the back of the development, but, um, uh, but that's it. So thank you. Sorry. I just have a question. Who'd you say was the developer? Who Cormier? Owned? Okay. I don't know if he all still owns that land, but he was the original owner of the land. Oral. And, and Oral, yeah. Or yeah, Oral, yeah. So and um, I did bring our covenants, but um, are they expired? No, nope, they have ten more years on them. Really? Yeah. He. I he mean, did he it was for really, thirty years. He he was really serious, and that's what I say. He was really serious about this development and, and maintaining the look of it. And um, that's not who owned the property originally. Hmm? The owner. Who owns the property now, now? Right. Received it from somebody else. Yeah. Who so he, so inherited it from somebody else. So this is already passed. This property is already passed hands from the developer. If the developer yeah. truly did own this. Not the developer's property. Originally. You're mistaken. Okay. No, no, so I, I, I didn't say, say this it was the, for sure. I said if it's it was. Not the property on the corner. Is the property on the. No, corner I understand that. A that something I was trying to understand. Family still owns. This is adjacent to that. It's not, it was not part of the original. original. So, so I guess my question would be who created the non-conforming lot, right? But it is, it, so it was, it is a non-conforming lot that was created by somebody, whether it was the. The lots were created before zoning. So zoning made it non-conforming. It's a grandfathered lot and there was a building on it in 1981 that was torn down by, uh, by the person that owns the lot. So there was a building on that lot. How big was that building? Uh, it, was, it was the size of a house. That predates me. From 1981, though. Right. I can't comment on that. It was before I was born. So. <laughs> yeah, okay. So, yeah. So, that's it. Okay. Thank, thank you. Thank you, guys. <laughs> Anyone else like to speak? I'm Catherine Kendrick, and I live on 20 Colonial Avenue. And uh, one of the, I echo everything that everybody else has said. Uh, I think that uh, this is totally unacceptable in terms of the parking and the way the building looks and what they're trying to do. Uh, but one thing that really hasn't been stressed is safety. Uh, I know when I come home from work every single night and I'm coming around 6 p.m. and I'm going past that gas station, I cannot tell you how many times I've almost been hit because the cars are going so fast behind me and then I'm trying to take that right turn 
and now I'm thinking there's little kids in the neighborhood plus so many people uh, using uh, that right turn, cars coming in so many directions, and then I just think if you have all these people parked there trying to get in and out of that lot, that it's going to just add uh, to safety concerns in the area, and I'm afraid, you know, accidents. There's no light there. Uh, there, uh, there's no light to control any of the traffic, and uh, it's a very congested area because people use that as a pass-through when they're trying to go to work in the morning and when they're kind of coming home at night. And so I just don't know if the impact of the kind of traffic that's going to be created in that area has been considered uh, thoroughly. Uh, I think the area is becoming much too commercial. Uh, with residential property abutting there. Um, so anyway, thank you uh, for considering those thoughts. Is there anyone else that would like to speak? <coughs> All right. Kick it back to the applicant. Is there anything you'd like to address? Please come on up to the podium, please. Um, there was a question about the scale of the building and several times comments made about the building is too large and I understand the concerns and I understand why the neighbors would be concerned. Um, I took a moment during the testimony to uh, count the tiles in the ceiling, okay? We're about 28 feet wide across in this room and we're about 35 feet long. So to give you an idea of scale, this space here, this retail space, is about the size of this room. To, to put the issue of scale in context, that retail space that we're talking about is the size of this room. So I just wanted to point that out. One, one side, right? One side. Okay. But when you put something like this where you can't build anything, that it's not appropriate for the size of this building. I understand it's a small that we all sit in here, but it's just not far enough from the road. That area is so dangerous. When you turn in the gas station, I cannot imagine another turn into that space. I, it's just not feasible. That I just have to comment on that one more time. So can, can I ask a question about that? Um, yeah. Um, so you have your, if you put up the, um, the blueprint, the, um, the other one, not the design. This one? No, this, please. So how far is the lot line from the road? Do you have um, an easement of what? The lot line, oh, here? Yep. Um, I'd say about 12 feet. And then how far is the first spot from the lot line? Number uh, one. Right here? Yes. This is another five feet. So approximately 20 feet from the road, that first parking spot's going to be from 114? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, so that lot line is how far from the road? This, uh, this well, about 12 feet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, approximately. If you look up there, see the 18? Yep. Versus that space, no, 12 to 15 feet From the active 114. From where the Yeah, okay. What about to Colonial Ave? Do we know, do you know what it, the distance is from where, roughly, I guess, where your lot line is to where Colonial Ave is? That little lot on the side. The little, I think it's about 70 feet more from there. To the road isn't there, but just with regard to the requirement or the hardship, hardship is due to the shape of the lot. You know, we have soil shape and topography. Obviously, you can't comply with zoning with the, sh the lot shape the way it is. So that's the hardship. It's not self created. The zoning superimposed upon this property created the hardship. And we have to reiterate, this isn't a residential lot, it's a commercial, it's business zoned. So When was the lot changed? When was that changed, the, um, The zoning? I don't know. 
Somewhere in the 80s. 86? Yeah. I think so. But it was, you know, before that it was residential down there. And then the town put in the business zone. So that, that's what it is. And that's what's being proposed. It's just a matter of that because of the shape of the lot, we can't meet the requirements of zoning. And that's the hardship. <coughs> so the, it's not self-created hardship. It's a hardship created by the this, this superposition, that, like the imposition of zoning upon the area. I'm just thinking now about this, um, the lot and the parking. So as someone said before, because I drive this all the time myself, because clearly I live on Colonial, when you're coming down 114, you're going at least, I don't know, 35, 40 miles an hour, 45 miles an hour, maybe, 35, <laughs> 35. But even so, there's always someone behind you, right? So then you put your blinker on. You, in fact, we have to play the blinker game, because you can't put your blinker on before you get to the gas station, because then people think you're going into the gas station. So you have to wait, put the blinker on quick, go into Colonial. So when we're pulling into this parking lot now, think about this. There's people coming out of the gas station, potentially. You You've got that to deal with. And then you've got someone behind you, and then all of a sudden you're gonna make a right turn and you're five feet, you're gonna be into a parking spot. That's never gonna work. Because you're going too fast when you pull into that parking lot. Because when I pull into Colonial, I have to put my brake on to cut the speed that I'm traveling at on 114. So if you really have someone look at that, that's extremely dangerous. Because you are never gonna get into that parking lot in a slow, safe speed. It's impossible because you have people behind you that are going 35 miles an hour or 45. I mean, seriously. So that's, that's a real issue, and that's way too close. Because I know, like I was saying, when I pull into my street, I literally have to put the, put the brake on immediately so that I'm safe for Lana's children and whoever is right there. So I think that's a real consideration with that. Last comment, please. Okay, sorry. So, um, I think it was you that asked about how far away it was. But so we have an aerial shot that I don't know if this was presented to the board, but it shows. Um, sure, show Alexander. <laughs> I'll take a look shows, at it. It shows where where their well, what their initial plan was, but um, so their lot here, and then this is Colonial. So it's not, and then there's I don't know if they're measuring from this dirt or where the property line probably starts, but when we make our turns, we are out to the dirt to, to be able to, to get around there ready. Okay. Thank you. I hope that helps. And, um, it does, thank you. So I didn't really, I didn't see the parking before. So it's just a, a one way in and one way out. Is that, am I reading that right? Yes. Unless you're going over grass. And the uh, accessible spot is a van. Is it a van of an accessible spot? Yeah. Yeah. Eight, the spot right next to eight, right? Yeah. So it's just one accessible spot? Yes. And, um, and then um, I thought of another question, but did you say there were stairs going up? I can't, I'm not supposed to ask them a question, right? There are stairs going up to the second story of this building? There are, yeah. So is that potentially, potentially? I think that there, I think that we could probably try to conjure a problem with every bit of this application, and I am loath to consider this the is, an issue about internal stairs. Well, I'm just saying like that is that potentially. I'm, uh, I'm certain that the building inspector would have every every word and the last word on. But it doesn't count as issues. square footage for this particular building because the the, yeah. the building is not not necessarily accurately outlined there, but the building right. is is uh, you know 65 by 40 the square footage of the structure yeah so how the applicant intends to use the interior of the structure how where the demising walls go it's where the vertical penetrations go where the plumbing goes that's going to be up to the applicant and up to the building inspe inspector yeah I mean it, it is hard certainly, to certainly not this board it's hard to tell from this how wide of an entrance and exit that is going to be because I think um, it is a 45 mile an hour road but and every car that drives down 114 has the exact same challenge pulling into every driveway, every road, no, 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 or, right, or right. every commercial right. establishment. So once well, again, speaking for myself, I am like not entirely yeah. persuaded that this is so extraordinarily dangerous. This is an entrance. 
on a on a state road nobody, where the speed limit is 40, 45, it's... 50 miles an hour, yeah. and it's no different than the rest of the 114 corridor. What, yeah, what, what is different? And I and and I respect your your view, but what's different to ours is that we have this massive Berry Street development that you guys could not take into consideration the, the traffic that all those people are now doing exactly what I was here saying was going to happen. They're all cutting through our neighborhood, which we, which <coughs> makes it hard for us. So that's what's different about this colonial, right? So there's, we're, a, there's, we're also, there's also some tension going on between some people are speaking about the master planning effort and what the town is, is you know, what it's endeavoring to create up and down, one, not just 114, but around the town. Around the town. And the, the buzzword today is nodes. They want nodes of commercial development. They don't necessarily want nodes stretched. They don't want commercial development stretched all the way up and down 114, or all the way up and down Salem Street, or all the way up and down Main Street. What they're seeking to these days is a node. And what we're what is developing, unfortunately for this neighborhood, what is developing is primes there, the sub shops there, the car shops there, Stonewall is there. If that's the right name of the development. So what's happening, unfortunately for Colonial, is this intersection is becoming a commercial node, which is precisely what today's planners are trying to create no, so right. I don't know a way around it if we if you well, say no. we don't want a commercial node at the end of our road which I 100% uh, get I wouldn't either quite frankly but it's what is being developed it's what's organically occurring what? along with what the planners are trying to create so either we go with what the we can adopt what the planners are suggesting occur or we stretch it out and the planners say, well, that's not what we're supposed to be endeavoring to. We don't want a commercial thing here and a commercial thing there. Everybody's got to drive all around creation. The planners want folks to come to an area, take care of their business, and then go home. That's not going to happen in that area because you can't cross 114 on foot because it's a 45 mile no, un un Understood. But, but, we're not talking about a pedestrian but in walkway any, But in here. any case, that, well, the only thing I was going to say was what's different, I think, about Colonial Avenue is that you, other areas where you have people coming in and out, it's um, there's there's not as many turning <clears throat> points, right? We have we have the Berry Street people coming in to take a left. We have the gas station that has lots of cars coming out, and then you'd have this development. Plus, you have us. You know, I don't think there's another development like that on 114 that has so many uh, traffic considerations that are coming. And I understand that you don't understand it, you don't see it as a concern. We see it because we live there. And I can certainly understand it that, that you don't see that. If you don't live there, you don't care. It doesn't, you know, like, it doesn't impact you, right? Unless you're cutting through our neighborhood, then you think, oh, this is really convenient. <laughs> but the, um, the logical extension of the argument is let's not have a curb cut. Let's not have a parking lot. Let's not have a structure. Let's not develop the parcel, which is also well, another argument that I 100% understand then my suggestion is somebody who doesn't want this developed should acquire the property and preserve it. Right. Well, I think that the um, the previous owner that moved out, I think a year ago, he was he could have bought it years ago, but missed opportunity. Exactly. And he so kicked here, himself as soon as, so, as soon as he lost So here it. we are. But and, and I'm actually not against necessarily building on that. I just <laughs> I think not, it's I think it's you're not it's a scum. against. No, 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 not, I'm not, <laughs> the, the, you can ask the emails that Give I sent to break. people. Give me a break, come on. Honest to God. You've you been up here for half honest an hour. Honest to God, you've it's every scale. excuse in the world not to build that thing, and you're telling us you don't I, really honest care? Honest to God, you can ask, you can You don't even that. live in that thing. Do you live on Boston Street, right? No, I live no, right in that neighborhood. Oh, my, my apologies. Oh, my God. So okay, what because I thought you told me you lived on Boston no, Street. No, I live on Axel Circle. And when they wanted to build Berry Street, they told me they were going to be going, okay, you complained about the traffic going up Boston Street. Well, it's a cut through from Colonial Ave. Right. I remember the argument well. But uh, that wasn't my argument for that either. That was other Well, let's not get but. into that. That's how we built, all right? <laughs> but, but no, but I honestly got because I'm like, okay, fine. Build something that I said last meeting. Build something that looks like a house that fits into the development. I would be but all for that. Why don't the that. neighbors, if they're so concerned about this building, why don't you neighbors get together and buy the land? <laughs> Well, maybe we will after if, By the if way, these variants doesn't I'll get tell you what, I'll make a motion that we continue this for 30 days, and Alan. I'll give you an option to buy the land. Why are you mad at me? No, I'm not <laughs> mad at you, but I mean, I'm like, we're I just going like on with redundant uh, arguments here. Okay, no. and, and when you come well, up no, and you say that you don't care what goes on the line, you've been arguing for 30 minutes to stop it. Alan, Alan. Right. You, uh, no, this particular, don't, don't take my words out. This, this scope, this size, is what... <clears throat> that I don't agree with. If it was one storefront for a beauty salon, 
So that you don't like agree a with house, it. I would be fine. What? Well, you don't believe me, but honestly, God, you can read my emails. I said, because I said, because this is exactly what I said, was be careful what you wish for, because look what happened to Barry Street. Barry Street had the, the residents on that side of the street. There were proposals that came forward for retirement communities, two of them as that, that I know of, and the residents over there shot it down, and now look, look what happened. So that was my take. So be careful what you wish for. Wait a minute, wait a minute young lady. Who voted no on Barry Street? <laughs> you did, I know. Okay. Okay. Who voted no on Barry Street? I know. Who I would have been a no vote. Oh, right. Then you were new. I think right. that might have been your first. No, I was here for quite a while. I thought that was one of your first No, I was here for quite a while. Anyways, thank Th you. Thank you. <laughs> All right, I think that's the uh, end of okay. public comment. One Let's little thing to this. Uh, it, if, if it's an addition. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, we've been there for 17 years at the present location, and we're just taking our clientele, so we're not in a situation where we don't know what's going to happen here. We're just taking our existing clientele, and like my wife reiterated in the last meeting, we do one person at a time. It's me and my wife working there at one part time. This is sounding like we're going to be sitting there contributing to about you know 50 percent of the traffic on 114. We'll be lucky if we're contributing to 0 0.001. It's basically going to be a customer being worked on. When they're done, the next customer is there. When they're done, the next customer is there. I'm sure everyone here is familiar with. Oh, yeah. No, thank you. No, thank you. The comments will be made. Yeah. One at a time. Yeah, and Elizabeth Grady is just one person who, who's asking to be there. My wife still has all the people she originally mentioned the last time. So I just want to just get everybody to understand that it's it's just one person at a time coming in, getting their hair done, and leaving. We can't service 15 people with two hands. And all we have is just two people, me and my wife, and a part-time person working there. And we can only do one person at a time. Understood. I just want to make that a little bit clear. So thank, thank you for thank that. Thank you. All right. Shall we, um, is there a motion to close public comment? I'll make a motion to close the public comment. Right. No. A motion's made, Alan? I make a motion to close the public comment. I'll second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? It's a, uh, unanimous public comment is closed. Mm -hmm. Now there'll be deliberations of the board. Would anyone care to begin? I'd like to say something. I think it's pretty evident which the way I'm going to vote on this, right? I mean, we don't got to be genius to figure that out, okay? However, to address your concern about you doing one client at a time, do you plan on working forever? Okay, what happens when you retire? Okay, what's going to happen to that sh place now? Well, my, my wife... Yeah, but, yeah, but don't give the argument, okay? Yeah, let's okay, just that you're going to be one guy at a time and you're going to do this. Let's, because um, you're not going to work there the rest of the day. Let's redirect a little bit, Alan. This, what, this okay. is just a del deliberation of the board. Okay. If we um, had any, any questions for the gallery of the applicant, okay. that, that my thing is, passed. when he says he's going to do one hair at a time and two hairs at a time or whatever, that's fine as long as he's in possession of his business. When he gets done with his business, when, God willing, old age hits and you want to retire, you start collecting Social Security. What happens to the building now? You're going to knock it down? No. No, <laughs> apparently not, right? You're going to sell it uh, right, and rent it out. So it potentially could not be a building or a use as you described. It could be a lot more. Correct? It, well, we're, again, again, Alan, we're not, ask, we're not asking questions of the gallery of the applicant anyways, anymore. Anyways. So, uh, we, Alan, to, certainly, to, certainly, a question that you could pose to the rest of the board. So, if you look at the size Alan. of this room, if there, you're, what you're saying is there's a, a potential for a five mm -hmm. seats or six seat, you know, salon, mm -hmm. which has that traffic, which it could be. So, your argument might be there could be the potential for additional seats. Right now, before us is what we have to look at. I agree, but I just want to address Correct. the applicant. So you just want it to be known? I just want it to be known that I'm not a fool. That you're not going to be there forever. <laughs> Alan, well, the, okay. to the board. The, 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 right. the flip side of that is it to intensify the usage. But you're right. We're going to vote on what's looking at us today. Correct. I, to, I agree with that. To, to address the question perhaps sideways a little bit, if you're trying to increase the intensity of this usage, if you want to go from a four-chair salon to an eight-chair salon, 
there's not parking available for it, so a, a new user wouldn't be able to no, make I'm that not change. Saying for this, I'm saying for some other use Unders of the building. Yep, understood. Some other use. Yep. And I understand that they're restricted by the parking that's available. Yep. I get that. Any other comments, questions, concerns? Ms. Jacobs. I'm, I deal with 114 all the time, just like everybody else, and I I go to the gas station. What can I You say? go to that gas station? <laughs> I do. Honest to God. I drive in the opposite direction to go to that gas station. Do you put the blinker on when you go into the gas station? I do, and I okay. blaze into that thing because I'm going hot. 35 hot. miles an hour. 35 miles an hour. Yes. Of course, my son is not with me. Um, and I, I understand, I think, the concern of, of the traffic and the going in and the going out. And I also do sit here and look at what we're looking at today, being one customer at a time. But I think one of the problems we enter is sometimes, as unfortunately agreeing with Alan, look God <laughs> trust me, I'll choke myself later, I know. Um, I know. is the concern of where we're going future-wise. And that can be increased traffic. I mean, it, essentially, you can have 11 people coming in and out at one time. I'm not sure if the distance between Colonial Ave along, and I understand the concern they're having. They do have a lot going on in this one little chunk. And that, I think, does create a difference from where you're at on the rest of 114. Because 114, not a lot of spots on 114 have this berry farm along with the car place, along with another retail place, along with the gas station, along with... So, I think that's... I will be on the fence until I open my mouth for a vote. Do you really think this is going to increase the traffic? Flow you know what? I will say. Th I will say this to you. I will say this to you. Do I think right now it will increase the traffic? Maybe not. Maybe not. I mean, if you want to look at exactly how it is right now in front of us, one person at a time. So maybe you have two cars in there. I don't know what Elizabeth Grady does. Um, they sell cosmetics. I don't know how you know that. I know Jack Walsh. <laughs> yes. Does he still have um, Yeah, but he's in Boston. I don't know. I don't know. So t here's my concern. Is it going to increase traffic at a percentage that would be like, oh, wow, look at that building, look at now I have a backup? No. But this building here, that building here, this building, the, the amount of you know piece nodes, as you call them, does increase it. Mm -hmm. My issue is everything's just so close to 114, and the, it, it just, you know, your, your spot's 20 feet from the road. You have a car 20 feet from the road. I mean, it, it's, it's designed to have, even though, yes, I understand, that lot is not going to be able to fit anything in compliance. But could it be moved back? Well, then, well, that's the same choice that we had to make matter. with Berry Farms, which is what do you try to achieve? If you move, if you move close to the road, at Barry Farms, if you move the development closer to the road, you get to salvage an awful lot of open space in back. If you take it away from the road, then you eliminate the open space in back. So the same thing is true in this case, which is I think the, the, the whole thing could move back. We could, we could say that let's put it right on the, you know, right on the lot line. I'm not saying right on, on the, the lot. Rear lot line. I know, I'm just being dramatic here. Just, just, just going to illustrate the point. Put it all the way back on the lot line, that will get the traffic away from, or the, the you'll have more room to turn into the parking lot. It will get the building off of 114, move it back a little bit. So there are absolutely virtues to moving it back, and I don't sit here in opposition to exploring that concept. I have a sneaking suspicion, however, that the neighborhood, I don't I can't speak for them, but my but my experience tells me that if the board suggested to move this thing back, then we would have a similar sense of disappointment, frustration, and opposition to the project. It's just at a different location. The reason will be it's too close to the water behind. But the building, the building could be smaller. I understand that maybe for this applicant that economically does not work, but it is very possible that this piece of land could have a one building, smaller function that does blend in a little bit more with the surrounding area. I agree with you. Mm -hmm. I mean, not 
if I lived on Colonial, I don't know how happy I'd be with that. But, but the, I mean, so it's not saying that the lot is useless, but it could be a smaller. Is this the best fit for this lot? And I don't this think is what you need to ask yourself. I think just I think the applicant has tried to address the neighbor's concern by planting a whole roll of evidites behind it. Because they okay. have to, Alan. What, what, whatever the reason being, he's trying to accommodate some some level of discretion or secrecy, of, so no one's looking at a building. Because by by our bylaw requires them to have to. Okay. It's not uh, done out of a. Uh, it's done out, out of the goodness of out of the goodness It's done of as a requirement, okay. not as like you know what? Hey, mm -hmm. I'm going to put this yeah. there because I want to do some screening. It's a requirement of our bylaw. Well, it's also one check mark off of a list between the look, the traffic, the size, the parking. <laughs> can I ask you people something? Us people, uh, you can ask this people anything you want. We all drive down 114, right? I live right down 114. It is a busy road. It is a busy okay. road. Okay, all right, okay. And if you got to pull into it, sometimes I got to wait five, ten minutes to get into it because of the traffic. It depends. I mean, if I'm going right, I just blaze into the gas okay. station because you know the one behind I mean, me is going to nail me. Something is telling me that maybe I'm I'm on the wrong 114 here. <laughs> it is always busy. Okay. It is always busy. Other developments have created <coughs> very farm have created issues, which some of us do not like. I guess. Anyways, I'll say. Get late. <clears throat> well, shit. <clears throat> I'm, I'm, <laughs> I might have to choke myself on this a little bit later, I'll too, help you later. Alexandria. But I'm, I'm aligned good. with Alan on oh. the on the concept <laughs> of, of the of this thing. I, I, I don't find it to be offensively massed. Could it, could it be smaller? Yes. The, the example I used earlier was a, 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 was a dog house. You could put a dog house there and we would still need an extraordinary number and degree of variance. That being the case, what can go here? What we have is an applicant who has a business, a, a business plan, or at least a business concept, to put a business next to a business in a business district on, a, on State Route 114. Conceptually, I have a lot of trouble poking holes in that. So what am I, what am I left with? I'm left with some very, uh, very well articulated concerns that traffic, there will be accretion traffic. And while I am also aligned with the folks who say that this single development with 12 parking spaces and 2,360 square feet of space, is that going to change the dynamic on 114 to make things more, more or less safe on a macro level? No, it's not. But I'm also perfectly aligned with this building and then another building and another building and then a huge building and then another building that absolutely changes the dynamic. And I don't know that there's a solution to that other than the master planning and improvements to 114 to the extent that this community one day stands up and tells me what it wants to be when it grows up. I don't say grow pejoratively. I say that as this community ages, what does it want to be? We're currently a town of about 30 square miles and about 30,000 people. Do we want to be a town of 60,000 people? If so, then let's plan for it. Show me residential development that will get us to 60,000 people. Do we want to be a town that remains at 30,000 people? Do we not want more density? Do we not want more people? If the answer to that is, yeah, I want to stay at 30,000 people, 30,000 person population, then let's zone for it. Let's th stop building residential properties. Let's stop developing commercial properties. Until the day comes that this community says, let's stop developing, I'm forced to consider these things. And this is, as I said, as I opened with, not offensive to me. Do I wish that this were, you know, I, I don't know, red brick or a, or a white colonial looking salon? Uh, maybe, but I don't think that that's, that's not the style of this particular salon. It's not the branding that this salon is trying to put forward. So, and it's not necessarily my position. If I were on the planning board, um, then perhaps that would be my position. Do I take a look at this and do I blanch in horror at the appearance of it? No, I don't. Do I, do I blanch at the internally lit signs? Yes, Alan, I do as well. Do I, <laughs> Do I blanch at a sign on, on, on each side? No, I don't. But again, that's not necessarily my, my purview. I will leave that to the people who study this kind of stuff and appreciate the, the effects of it and know what the norms are rather than just 
my knee-jerk gut reactions. So to the extent that the remainder of this board is in interested in what my, where, the way that I'm thinking and wants to probe it, poke it, <coughs> or kick it to the side, uh, you know, this is, this is absolutely the time because the board is deliberating about this application. So I guess <coughs> there ends my thoughts and Ms. Jacobs has something she's dying to say. I get their branding and I understand that, but I think I think you have to find more compromise. Yes, I get it. You're asking the applicant to do more, but they're also kind of the one wanting something, which requires a little bit more compromise on their end. And I do think that they can still keep with the branding and the front glass windows, but not but make it look like it does fit in more. I mean, if this was in downtown North Andover, go down the street, there's one I think right there. So that would fit perfectly. That's not where it is. And I understand that where we are in 114. Alex, Alex, do you know who the abutter is to the right? What? The abutter to the right of this project here, right? The gas station. Right, with a big sign. I wasn't here for that. I don't okay, even think but, I was but, born but when that got put on. the gas on. station is here. <laughs> I wasn't okay, you know, that we're inventing the wheel here. The gas station, unless we ask the gas station to close, the gas station's going to stay. And you know, just like if <laughs> Berry Farms I wouldn't have been for, I probably wouldn't have been for that big, huge sign, even though I would still get their gas. Um, and you get gas there. I do get Do you look at the signs and see how much the gas costs? No, I just always know it's the cheapest. Okay. <laughs> um, but I do think you can fit in. And I, I understand the gas station is there. That's something that's been there. That's something that was. And it's not going away. And I get that. But that does not mean that, oh, you have a cut. Let's just cut it deeper. I mean, stop the bleeding somewhere. Right. Any other comments, questions, concerns? No. Well, the only thing that gives me, if, if we're at a, at a place where we want to request something of the applicant, then certainly this is the time. Otherwise, it's time for a vote. But if it's time for a vote, I'm a little bit uncomfortable. Um, you know, if we always have to move in the affirmative, um, I'm uncomfortable with a plan suggesting you know that the proposed, the proposed building is a four-chair salon with 1,180 gross square feet of retail. Um, and particularly in the context that the first plan we were given actually broke it out and said that it was a 2,700 square foot building with 1,200 salon and 1,500 of office. So if, if we were voting, I would certainly um, ask for a new plan indicating the entirety of the square footage of the building. Which, now that I'm looking at the other plan, I would, I would argue uh, similarly with Alan that the applicant has listened to the concerns last time, which were plentiful, and the applicant has taken very concrete steps uh, to address the building is smaller. The part, this, there is no longer, um, this, the first plan, as the folks may or may not recall, had a parking lot on the right-hand side, and then there was pavement all the way around the building. So there were actually two sets of, of curb cuts, which was something that was brought up tonight. Um, which was uh, certainly ob ob objected to, and the applicant in the intervening months has listened to that concern and redesigned. So they have shrunk the building, they have shrunk the impermeable surface, they have reduced the number of curb cuts, they have actively gone to the fire department to make sure that there are no concerns with the uh, public safety access there. Um, they did make aesthetic changes. They may not be changes that um, everybody, you know, em embraces, but the applicant was certainly listening. So that's just a, I guess, a, an add-on point that nobody cares about. Do we know if the letter from the fire department is based off of the old one or the new one? The new one. The new one? Okay. Thank you. Madam Vice Chair, any final thoughts? No. Uh, it was, uh, it's uh, hard to, have you marked that up for a, a motion? I have. For a motion? I have. Is there a motion? I make the motion to uh, approve the, the project Please as presented. So we're closed, right? So. Oh, you want to close the hearing first? Did you? I, I make a motion to close the, the, the <laughs> 
What do, what do you want to call it? The discussion of the board? <laughs> well, there, second. All right, the motion made and seconded. Uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Universal aye. All right, I'll make a motion to approve the um, application presented to us of uh, Connie and Nicholas Ver Ver um, Vergados. Vergados, sorry, at property 117, <coughs> one, 1717 Turnpike Street, wow, wow, and not the end of a mass, to grant the variance listed under section 4.131 general business for a um, area required is uh, 25,000 square feet provided is 15,000 suites, 15,000 square feet. So that is a release of, release of 10,000 square feet. I'm sorry, I need a coffee. Um, frontage is not a, um, so the front setback is required 100 um, feet provided is 26 with a relief of 74. Left side setback is Required is 40 and provided is 18, so a relief of 22 feet. The rear setback required is 50, proposed is 36, so that's a relief of 14. Um, I'm going to reference uh, plans dated by Christensen and Sergi on revised 5118, revised 5718. Uh, the landscaping landscaping plan, uh, date 5-1-18, um, architect's plan one and the, um, the second one with a square foot and the various materials submitted by planning and the applicant with the condition that this plan gets revised to show the actual square foot of 2,360 which was proposed. Anyone second that? I second that. <laughs> Unless there's any other conditions that you see there or anything okay. that I missed. Any other conditions? Uh, was there a second? I seconded it. Yep. Motion made and seconded. <clears throat> All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Aye. Three to two. Variance passes. Thank you. The next item on tonight's agenda is the petition of serious development for property at 562 Boxford Street. Just to let you know, this is going in front of the planning board as well. So this at this application would be going to, to check on the on the. Um, on the website. On the website, you'll see it in the planning board as well. There's, there's one more on the board. Oh, they're going to get it. So you're here for this one too? I am. What a pleasure. Philip Christensen, uh, Christensen and Sergi. Uh, this is for a project on Boxford Street, and uh, we're here before. We needed uh, a variance from the Board of Health, but also from the Conservation. Uh, I've given you this extra little plan here, which is a copy of what's on the board over here. And uh, just to explain what the other variances are, we did get the variance from the Board of Health a month ago. We do not yet have a written letter on that. Uh, it will be coming. Uh, 
We have another meeting with conservation tomorrow night just as far as a uh, replanting area is concerned, but they voted on the variances from conservation regulations as well. Uh, on the plan that I just gave you, in green is the existing house on the property. Uh, behind that, ab above it, you'll see a dotted area, which is the existing leach field. And uh, the new house is in red. Proposed leach field is, is behind the house. You'll see uh, uh, three lines for that. Now, that needed a variance because the Board of Health in North Andover says you have to be 100 feet from wetlands with the septic. Title V, the state rules, is only 50 feet. Uh, so the Board of Health did grant us that variance. With regard to the Conservation Commission, we have the wetlands line shown here that have those little flag numbers. If you look at flag A, uh, 145A, uh, that was about six feet farther to the uh, east when we originally did the line. Jennifer moved it that way. Uh, by moving it six feet, we had to move the building over. Uh, there, there's two offsets to be concerned with here. The normal offset from wetlands is a 25-foot is non-disturbance and then a 50-foot no build. But then also there's a vernal pool within this wetland, so that increases the non-disturbance zone to 50 feet and the no build zone to 75 feet. So one of the things conservation has done is allow us to, you see the uh, NBZ on that red line, that's the no build zone. They're allowing us to build the house within what they consider to be a no build zone for the vernal pool, but they're requiring us to be 50 feet from the wetlands. Uh, that's the no disturbed zone. For the vernal pool, it gets a little confusing, but the no disturbed zone for the vernal pool is 50 feet. The no build zone is 75 feet. But the no build zone for the wetlands is 50 feet and the non disturbance is 25 feet. In any case, conservation saying, look, we're letting you go closer to the vernal pool than we ordinarily do, but we don't want you to bring that house back any farther. The end result is instead of having 30 feet for an offset from the property line, we're down to 16 feet. And that's what's shown on the, uh, the variance plan we submitted. So we have an existing lot which doesn't comply with the present two acre zoning and we need that sideline offset uh, reduction in order to comply with all of conservation's requirements. On the left hand sideline, that's what, a 16, 16 yes. feet from the lot line? Yes. 16.5. So as I said, conservation is going to approve this. Board of Health has approved it. And now we look to you folks to approve it. So you're not going to ask how big is the new home as opposed to the existing? Uh, the existing home is Probably, I don't, you know, I don't even know if there's a second floor there or not. There's no second floor. You, you've been in there? Uh, no, no I, dri I drive by them. Okay. You say 12? I mean, not even, I don't no. think. No. no. It's a tiny little, tiny little shack. Right. right. And by the way, the septic system is for a three bedroom. That's all we can put in here. That's all we can fit. So the house is restricted to three bedroom. So it's approximately 2,400 square feet. That's a 2,400 square foot home? all the approvals but us yes correct? that's correct not all signed that's right i accept Mr. I, 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 work, I, he's a gentleman look at that face <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah 
It's, it's tough getting a letter out of Board of Health. I don't know why. But <laughs> so are you allowed, to, allowed to put some screenage between the two properties? Or is there, is there green there anyways? I mean, because it is a, close to no, the neighbors. They, there's uh, trees that have been planted along, uh, along the lot next door. But on this lot, no. <laughs> they can easily be planted there, but there's nothing there now. There's, there's some evergreens planted along the lot line of the other property. So is there, is there, is there no way to increase? I mean, the, I mean, in the context of this relatively enormous lot, to, I, I appreciate that the building is, you know, cornered by wetlands, but is there is there not some way <coughs> to offer greater setback with the Santayani property? That 16 and a half feet is just so narrow yeah. that it, it it catches. It's hard not for it to not catch attention. Yeah, uh, you know, if you slid it the house forward a bit. You slide along that ND zone, the no disturb zone there. <coughs> you could get a little bit farther away, but you could only come forward maybe five feet. I think the front setback right now is <coughs> 35, so your requirement is 30. So I don't think sliding along there f five feet forward is going to make any difference. <coughs> uh, you know, you, you look at, say, taking this house and, and rotating the house a bit but then you, the diagonal of the house winds up being as close to the property line as the as it is now you know if you slid it forward and rotated it somewhat it's it's tough uh, you know just with all of those it's particularly that vernal pool if that vernal pool wasn't in there and I don't know it's I guess it's an ephemeral pool it's not even a vernal pool but uh, you don't have much room other than to turn the house sideways entirely. And then you really, you know, I don't think you have a house that's in keeping with the neighborhood. I mean, you go out there, everybody's the same, parallel to the street, colonial houses. You know, you put in an oddball, it doesn't help the neighborhood at all. I'm not, uh, uh, so I'm speaking largely of ignorance here because I, I don't necessarily, I don't think I have a rendering to see what the, you do? She <clears throat> So that so the part of the home that is closest so the sixteen and a half feet away that is the garage. Yes. I'm, So what line are you restricted in to put the, the footprint of the house? Excuse me? What, what color can you put the footprint of the house? Um, I mean, you can't put it over to where the previous push it over? No, you can't build on that. Conservation will not allow that. Which one, the red NDZ? Uh, yes, NDZ, right. Can't go beyond that. Yeah, there's also an existing well where the well is shown on this lot. Uh, and we really need the well there. If you can see, that's just 100 feet from the septic system. Uh, but there's no town water out there? No. It stops at, you know, the new subdivision, uh, Wellington Way, yep. which is just east of here. And then it's down on Duncan Drive the other way. So there's no water goes by this line. Because my daughter lives on Brookview and she has, but I think she gets Brookview, a, It came in Brookview from the back of Duncan Drive. Oh, okay. Came in Brookview, and then Bob Messina extended it All right. up mm -hmm. into Wellington Way, and that was it. Yeah. That's, that's as far as it went. So 
Th thanks to Ms. Jacobs, I have the rendering. I have some confusion. It may not be relevant, but I at least want to get it straight. A according to the this rendering, the garage doors you're entering, the garage doors appear to be here yeah, on the rendering. And the driveway is going, so the, the garage doors are here. Yes. We have to change it. It just wouldn't, with 16 feet. When we started out, we were trying to stay right here and come in that way. Didn't work. So is everything on the rendering the same, except the, same. the doors are now just in the front of it versus the side? Okay. Yeah. okay. here that wishes to be heard seeing and hearing none at least it'll be shorter <laughs> <laughs> not necessarily <laughs> any final words no okay uh, make a motion to close the um, close the, the hearing public, public comment public comment yeah I'll second a motion Motion made and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Unanimous. Now the board may deliberate, shall deliberate. Do we need a motion to deliberate? <laughs> no. No, 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 sir. <laughs> My feeling is this is almost a no brainer. There's a little decrepit cottage there. Okay. And what they're doing is improving the neighborhood. And I know he's very close to the side setback. But with the topography of the land and the way the conservation works, there's nothing else the man can do. He's gone through all the appropriate uh, agencies, boards, whatever. I think putting a nice, decent house instead of the vacant piece, the vacant property that's there is a boost to the town, Not, notwithstanding the extra tax revenue the town would gain by taxing a new house versus the old shack. Always thinking about the town. Thinking about the town. That the education revenue. of your kids, right? For the school department. Keep it going. Does the board have any concerns about traffic? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, you know what? That part of the, that part of Salem Street's getting very dangerous. Is there a gas station out there on Black Street? <laughs> All right, let's stop it. Okay. I'm okay with the traffic as of right now. Parking seems to be okay. Thank you, Ms. Jacobs. Any, uh, any comments? <laughs> Nothing percolating. Is there a motion, Madam Vice Chair? I will make a motion to grant the variance located on 50, 562 Boxford Street, map 10, oh, Jesus, <laughs> sorry. 105.C parcel 003, not the Andover, in the R1 zoning district <clears throat> for the petition of ser uh, serious development LLC for variance from table one to construct a new single family home for section 4.121 for lot area required is 87,120 proposed is 56,652 with the relief needed of 30,468 and uh, left side setback required is 30 proposed is 16.5 with the relief needed of 13.5 and I'm going to reference the conservation plan that was submitted tonight the variance plan um, from serious development by Christensen and Sergi dated to 12 18 and the revision date no no so it's taking that long to do the other boards. So. Sovereign designs with the um, revised doors to be in the front as uh, um, A101, what is this? Um, rendering plan with, uh, again, with the revision of the garage doors to be on Boxwood right. Street. And the other plan submitted by Christian and Sergi, delayed it, dated. 
112.15. Oh, this is just for reference. The, um, yeah. yeah. That was signed off on the development. Motion made. Is there a second? I second the motion. Motion made and seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Um, aye. Seven. Aye opposed? Oh, it's in front of the motion? Yeah. Yeah. Opposed the motion? Opposed yes. the motion. Yes. Aye. Aye. Oh, aye. stop it. That's, that's <laughs> all, right. all right. And the motion, motion passes four to one. Thank you. Thank you. Three to two. Just a, just a correction. It's um, Alexandra and I said no, so it's. Oh, you said no? I, I said no. I no, I your, said no. I beg your pardon. Yes, this yes. was three to two. No, that's fine. Sorry. My, that was my <laughs> confusion. I, I confused did, you. I did. We both uh, no, said no. Still, yes, Alexandra said no as well. Uh, the next item on the agenda appears to be a new public hearing petition uh, at uh, 142 Boston Street. You need to appoint a clerk then. I need to appoint a clerk? Oh, oh, I don't think we appoint a clerk. We just need someone to read the motion, do we not? I'll, I'll, I'll ask Ms. Jacobs to oh, I don't open have the public anything hearing. anything in front of me. There you go. You want me to read it? Yes, he's a senior man, most senior member. You told me to appoint a clerk. He is a most senior member. All right. Fire, fire away. Am I on? Alan. Yeah. Notice is hereby given that the Board of Appeals will hold a public hearing at Town Hall at 120 Main Street, North End of the Mass, <clears throat> on Tuesday, May 8, 2018, at 7.30 to all parties, 7.30 p.m., to all parties interested in the petition of Kevin McLean and Melanie McLean for the property located on 142 Boston Street, which is map 107B, lot 36, North End of the Mass, 01845, in the R2 zoning district. The petitioner is requesting a special permit from 4.121.17 of the zoning bylaw, family suite in the R2 zoning district is required from the Zoning Board of Appeals. All right, welcome. The floor is yours. Kindly introduce yourself. I'm uh, 142 Boston Street, uh, recently purchased the home and just applying for a variance that was existing for a family suite. So you just want to extend the pre-existing uh, variance, correct? So you're not making any changes to the home? No. So this is, is this Wally and Sue Martino's home? Excuse me? Is this Wally and Sue, Sue Martino's old home? I don't know. Is it? Yes. <laughs> Wally's home, yes. I used to live right next to him. You did? I did. That was my first not the end of a home. It's not. It's not. They were across the street. No, no, no. The parents were across the street. Wally and Sue were on. <clears throat> okay, so it's not the little. This is kind of home several years ago. Yeah. So, oh, this is this house that had uh, three three families. Or, okay, that's the one. Okay, this looks like a three, if you go down Boston, Correct. it looks like a three-family home. Right. I oppose this when they came in for the thing, but you people voted for it. You people, again, you people. You people. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you never need anything. I know. I know. I moved the so, end of the first. I, I think your problem with the, that other one was that um, it's because it was intended for it was intended for three, two in-laws in the original family. Correct. So, with the two different entrances, like it, it was. It was a three family. It was a three family. It was a three basically. family. Right. Yes. And you just want to extend it to have it no change in anything you're just extending the family suite to go with the home correct okay he's being a nice man by observing the law i have my daughter living on the right hand side and i have my son living on the left wow you're never getting rid of them oh. you i know. want to put a third one in i know Okay. 
Inspector Lee, I, anybody have any questions, comments, no. or concerns for the applicant? I think you should be commended for doing it the right way. We are. Instead of just sneaking somebody in the front right. With that, is there a motion to close public comment? Did you want to have anyone come up and talk? Or? Oh, I didn't ask that question, did no, I, Madam didn't. Vice Chair? <laughs> is there anyone here who wishes to be heard on this matter? There is. See? You just come on up and introduce yourself, please. Thank you, I'm Peter Rodelski, uh, 145 Boston Street. I'm actually the abutter that is directly across the street that looks at this house. Um, and what I'm here for today is to remind the board of the history of this home. Uh, this is a situation where Mr. McLean, uh, in fairness to him, I think was, for lack of a better term, hoodwinked by the real estate agents. If you look at the, uh, you know, as to what this house actually is conformed to be, uh, my concern is, just as you have alluded to, it's a three-family house right now. Uh, thankfully, Mr. McLean is all one family. Uh, the history on this home is that it was illegally, uh, without any permits, um, behind closed doors, divided up. And there was, a, uh, as a matter of fact, a big cabana built in the back with a garage without permits. Uh, everything on this property was done under the radar. And it turned into a situation when the prior owners first lived there, they had their mother and father on the left side, which is the legal in-law suite, uh, and then the, I think, 75, 80-year-old grandmother uh, on the, uh, as you're facing the house on the right side. Um, everything was fine. No issues, no issues taken, good people. Then all of a sudden, the grandmother passes away, just as you're alluding to with that other property. What happens in the future? And that's why I'm here. I need to stop the bleeding. Uh, I want to make sure this board remembers and hopefully can do something uh, to make sure this ends, because what happened after the grandmother passed, and then the parents moved to, stayed on the deed, but moved to New Hampshire. They had uh, a lesbian couple on the right side move in, and I emphasize that only because the board didn't realize those people weren't family, because the Steves were saying they were family. But I found out they were a married uh, couple. They were trying to say they were cousins or whatever it was. They were a married couple. They had cats, they, they were doing barbecues out front, uh, and then on the other side where they had the suite, they had this older gentleman with this younger woman, when I say older, probably 70s, uh, and not in conform I mean, their children that owned the house were, you know, grade school kids at the time, uh, and one in high school, I think. So it, this was a situation where it turned into a three family, which multiplied the cars. They were parking on the grass on the right side, the, the, the women, uh, and then they had their parties and they would line up. They created this driveway that's gravel now um, when they were living there to create that extra entrance into that side, which is not a recognizable suite. And the reason why I mentioned to Mr. McLean this hoodwink, so to speak, is because these realtors admitted to the fact that they, they called it a suite, but they said, oh, it's not a legally recognized one in the listing. There's not much I can do at this point, at that point, to, to stop a, a listing, so to speak. Um, but it is a situation, again, I have to live there. Uh, I don't want to be that neighbor to rat people out and be a pain in the ass, for lack of a better term, excuse my language. But it, 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 this is round three, and it's, it, it has to stop. Uh, and, and that's what I'm here for. Not necessarily to object to this. His daughter, congratulations, she just had a baby. Uh, this is wonderful. It's a great thing to be able to set this up and, and move her in there. But uh, I don't want it turning into what happens when the daughter moves out, what happens when the son's gone. You know, they're at an age, things are they're going to grow up, things are going to happen, and it has to stop. So I don't know what to do about that house right now. Uh, I don't want to have to move. I don't think I should be the one to be forced to move because somebody did something illegal. I'm here to make sure things are done legally. Uh, and, and that's what I needed to voice to uh, the board tonight, to make sure that this stops with what's going on there. And hopefully with Mr. McLean, and I've already talked to him, you know, had enough shoveling together with this weather. <laughs> uh, we've gotten to know each other pretty well. but it. it just, you know, that's, that's what I need out of this. I want to make sure we know who's living there uh, and that uh, things are done legally. Thank you. Thank you. 
I'm Kim Azavardian, 160 Boston Street. A uh, long time resident of the neighborhood since I was a baby in 1958, off and on, mostly on. Um, I have uh, no objection. In fact, I support the use continuing. Uh, I presume it's going to be legal. Uh, and uh, I also respect the right of the neighbors to actually have some privacy, too. Uh, and, uh, and any compliance be reasonable, any compliance checks be reasonable. Um, I uh, was also asked by uh, Andrew Rossi, 175 Sullivan Street, to express his support. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else? <clears throat> So just just so that we we do it on the record, uh, um, my hope or expectation, frankly, is to to address I, I think your main concern the the stop. I'm not certain that there's anything anybody can do to actually stop the cycle, but at a minimum, if we get this thing legally recognized, then there's at least will be something in the record for people to refer to. And in, in, in this case, uh, with the applicant coming in and, and doing it doing the right thing the right way. Um, one of the one of the steps associated with a family suite is that the special permit needs to be recorded at the Registry of Deeds. So there will be something in the chain of title, and it's my expectation that it will articulate um, at, at a minimum the section of the code, if not the actual language of the code, which says, and this is for the for the applicant's benefit. I think this is a good idea because the, the, myself, historically, and the board generally has examined these things pretty pretty thoroughly when they become when they come before the board. Um, is that the, the the family suite may, and this is the language from section 2.37.1, which says that the family suite may only be occupied by brothers, sisters, maternal parents, and grandparents, in-laws, and or children of the residing owners of the principal dwelling unit. So what that is saying, just in, in this case, Mr. McLean, is that as long as you live there, then those folks, in-laws, in brothers, sisters, kids, uh, may live there. If you leave the property, if you go to live in New Hampshire, you were, God bless you, retired Arizona, Florida, or some other tropical destination, um, you're no longer a residing owner, and so therefore the family suite will kind of expire as, as, as per the terms. Um, additionally, in here, there is uh, the, the language of the bylaw indicates that the premises are inspected annually by the building inspector for conformance to the, the bylaws. <clears throat> so I, I guess my message merely is to expect, just kind of expect that yep. uh, to, to be coming as a matter of course. So th th thank you for the, for the commentary and um, Mr. Dulski and I guess I'll... Can you just, I just have a question. Um, yes. This is from the realtor. I'm just curious, where is the family suite on here? Because it's not clearly defined because I think this is the bedroom level. Second like two families, like one family, two families, three families. But I'm not seeing kitchens. I'm not seeing. You know what I mean? Well, yeah, I can't, yeah. yeah huh? it's, I can't figure it out either. Uh, left hand side. Yeah. You so can, we're on floor, main level, right? Is everything on the main level? Because I know it's a two family, two yes, story. Yes. Main level. Well, okay. yeah, but there's a garage under. Okay. All right. So main level, the one with the office in the back. Yes. That's actually going to be my Just grandson who was born last night. That's going to be his bedroom. Oh, congratulations. Congratulations. Thank you. Babies. And that's a kitchenette. Okay. Yes. All right. Yep. So then you have the, the main area. So that's the two bedroom, family room, bath, little kitchenette. That's where your daughter's going to live. Yes. And the rest of the house is going to be yours. My, yep. My wife and I. Uh, are occupying the main part of the house, and my son is in the right. So that's a kitchenette too? No. So it's showing here as a kitchenette. Well, it shows a sink. A sink yeah. and a refrigerator. So that, I'm assuming, is going to be, is there, to, is there still, or? Yep. Yeah, that's how it was set up. So a sink and it looks like refrigerator. Yep. He's a boy. What more does he need? Okay. 
And that's so the confusion of the three Just human. confirm, so that's what we're talking about, is that right? Correct. And always the confusion was this was the third. Yeah. Because of the kitchenette area. Everything but a stove area. <laughs> I think you addressed it that he understands that you understand that once this property changes hands, this variance is over. Correct. Right. Just as it was when so, I bought right. it. That's correct. Yeah. That it's for you and you only. Yeah. Right. Did we close the public hearing? No. I make a motion to close the public hearing. Apparently, my motion didn't stand, so you're just going to just bulldoze it right over me, right? Yeah. No, I asked her. She said we, we didn't make a motion to close the public hearing. <laughs> I just hearing. was making that we're motion. Just, we're just close, close, closing comment. The hearing will remain open okay. so that the board may deliberate move if so desired. Well, I'm not touching you now. I want that B2 <laughs> thing to start. I'm going to make a motion to close public comment. <laughs> Is there a second? I'll second the motion. Motion made and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Non unanimous. I think it's pretty clear cut here. I mean, it's. You do. Yeah. I'll borrow Alan's phrase. No, this this one feels like a no-brainer. Although it's a it's a tangled property with a with a tangled history, we have an applicant before us who appreciates that history, appreciates how tangled it has been, uh, and both public public comment and I think the board has made relatively clear. If you didn't know already, we've certainly just got to do our duty, um, not necessarily to harangue the applicant, but certainly to make clear what the expectations and frankly the requirements are of the code. I think that has been achieved. Okay. Is there, is, there a, is there a motion? I'll make a motion to close the hearing. Is there a second? I second that motion. And then I will. Motion made and seconded. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? Unanimous. So I'll make a motion to grant the special firm permit in front of us by Kevin McLean and Melanie McLean for the property located at 142 Boston Street. Map 107B, Lot 36, North Andover, Mass, in the R2 Zoning District to grant a special permit from 4.121.17 of the Zoning Bylaw uh, Family Suite in the R2 Zoning District. And I am going to reference the mylaw that you gave from the Moore and Cameron Group dated 2-5-2014. And I'm also going to reference in here um, the definition of a family suite of 2.37.1. Did you want that with the deed to be filed? That, that the applicant is aware of that if um, you actually do move according to the direction that the family suite goes, you have to stay there. So in, in, the, in, in the special permit, we will include that language. Just in the special permit, in the approval, we're going to approve the language of 2.317.1 family suite definition as well as 2.40 section 17A, B, and C. Any conditions from the board? You don't like those right. conditions? I'm uh, just making sure that there were none others, oh. Madam Vice Chair. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Is there a second? I second it. Motion made and seconded. Why don't we do? Why don't we do a roll? See, that's what happens when you're a rookie. You learn along the way, kind of. <laughs> Mr. Kusha. Aye. Ms. McIntyre. Aye. Ms. Jacobs. Aye. And Nathan. Aye. Aye. Uh, I'm also an aye, so that's unanimous uh, motion. 
approved. Thank you very much. Good Special. luck. And don't forget, you can be, if you, they can't come out in any time to review that. Yep. And I appreciate your neighbors policing it and keeping it with the intention that it's supposed to be at. I found out some of that history just tonight. Oh, a lot of history there. Yeah. All right, and we shall we shall move on. The next is, if everybody could take, would you, excuse me, folks, if you could just take it outside, we're going to continue. Sorry, excuse me. We will move on to a petition at 35 Dale Street. Hello, I am Jay Henshaw. Wait, we have to. We have oh, to. I'm sorry. I thought sorry. you did. Notice is hereby given that the Board of Appeals will hold a public hearing at the Town Hall at 120 Main Street, North Andover, Mass, on Tuesday, May 8, 2018, at 7.30 p.m. to all parties interested in the petition of J. Henshaw for the property located at 35 Dale Street, Map 37D, Lot 41, North Andover, Mass, 01845, the R1 Zoning District. The petitioner is requesting a variance pursuant to Town of North Andover Zoning Bylaws Section 4.136.3.C.II .I .I for construction of an above ground pool in the R1 Zoning District. A variance is requested under Section 4.136, the Watershed Protection Division, three uses and building requirements, C period, II, I, three non disturbance buffer zone of the zoning bylaws. Now, sir, it's up to you. Hi. Okay. Static. Jay Henshaw, Gibraltar Pools. What we're uh, requesting is uh, basically permission to install an above-ground pool in the watershed. We conform to all the other setbacks, all the other zoning requirements. Just to get, are you the owner of the property? No, I'm the contractor. Do you have permission to speak for the owner? I do. Okay. Is it in here? No. It's in everything. Okay. Um, I'll give you a little background on this if, uh, if I can. From a, uh, We're making all the rounds. We've already been to conservation and planning. No, on this because I'm not seeing anything in here oh, saying there. that you have permission to speak on behalf of the abata there is a okay there I do have a letter of permission from the abata for probably the planning board of conservation somehow it didn't get into here I wasn't asked for a letter for zoning it's I was not. asked for a letter for conservation. Well, we always have to get a letter if the owner is not going to be here and the person requesting it isn't okay. going to be here so that we okay. know that they're okay with what you're doing. All right. Uh, hmm. Well, then we have a problem. I, I don't think it's a matter of being asked to do it. It's okay. Just a, I wasn't informed at all that I needed a letter for zoning. I apologize for not knowing it. So I if you did think supply you have to a letter. Planning and conservation. Well, this has been this has been yeah, it's been a it's been a relatively confusing situation because the way this has to all fall out, it had to go to conservation first. We basically got a pool for conservation left open deliberately in case uh, planning wanted to change anything, so that they wouldn't have to reopen the hearing. So that was the the step of conservation. So they basically approved it, but left it open in case a change had to be made. They wouldn't have to do it again. And we went to planning, and planning doesn't have, planning wanted to wait, they held the voting and continued it because they wanted to wait for the outcome of this meeting. So this has just been kind of going around. Planning doesn't do that. They did it. <laughs> yeah, planning makes their own decision, but I mean. They yeah. decided not to vote until there was a decision made on, by the. Well, we could decide not to vote until we decide to hear what the planning says you in could. conservation. So exactly, I mean, that's kind of what's happening. Tail, which is ridiculous. I know, well, but unfortunately, that's kind of what I'm stuck in here. Because you're not the um, owner of the property, I don't know if we could hear it. To be honest with you, unless you, there's something that you can present to us that well, can give you authorization. Let me to. see. I have a lot of stuff here. I mean, I would hate for you to wait another month. Well, if you can't present that, I wouldn't be comfortable listening to the application. Let's see. I do have a letter, so I'm just going to maybe. I'll make a good decision. I think. Uh, 
Somewhere I gotta let it in. Bear with me here for a minute. Maybe in the other folder. Yep. Uh, it's, it, I mean, I, I don't mean to make you, like, nervous. It just, I mean, it's just... Oh, no. I know. It's I mean, just I get so much it's, stuff here. It's, it's we have to protect the homeowner because this goes with the deed of the property. You, you know what I mean? Yeah. I actually, I understand the situation. Okay. I just, I do have a letter. I just got to find the down there. It's the one thing I didn't put in the other. I've got so many folders on this. Well, while you're looking, I'm going to take a, <laughs> a quick read. Yeah, I don't. All right, let's go here. Which application? Okay, let's look at it. Do you want me to grab a file, a file and look? <laughs> well, I'll grab one and go through it <laughs> just to help you. <laughs> there's a million fold. There's a million pieces of paper on this one. Little forest. And it has a kind of cotton in a circle here where it has to go to you before it goes to you before it goes to you. No, that that happens. It's turning that into five meetings now. Happens a lot on the on the watershed stuff. So yeah, it's it's nothing that we haven't been confronted with before. Probably not. What I up for. we essentially what, got, like I said, we got the we got the okay. Yeah. What I would suggest, Mr. Henshaw, yeah. is that for purposes of tonight, uh, I would uh, agree with Madam Chair. I'd be comfortable hearing the application, but I certainly would not be comfortable deciding on the application okay. without knowledge that the landowner without paperwork suggesting that the landowner has authorized you to speak on his or her behalf. Now, what I am comforted by, Mr. Henshaw, is that the application that you supplied offers the signature of Robert Bouye, which appears to be the landowner, and with uh, Jay Henshaw apparently as the petitioner. So there is some comfort that the two of your, your minds have met. Yeah. Uh, nonetheless, there's, a, there's a, a separate piece of paper that I would need in order to complete the file. So if you can just cure that in the next month before the next hearing, then we will certainly. When is the next hearing? June, June 12th. June 12th. Yep. Valerie sorry, knows. June 12th. June 12th. But what's going to happen is the meeting on June 5th will get continued again. And then I have to meet with you guys and I'll have to go back to planning, which puts this whole project not buildable until into August. The. Um, I'm not not unsympathetic to to, nope. to that death spiral kind of thing, but I'm similarly I'm sure you're sympathetic to the. You know, the I understand the that situation. The the, but I don't have a problem with this, obviously. But what I'm saying, this whole thing has been kind of very strange. It all started out with a mistake in the conservation department by Kale. She was new, I guess. Didn't understand the situation. 
So we went into this project. I appreciate that, Mr. With, Henshaw. With we, are, we are where we are. So my suggestion is that we proceed with the All hearing right. tonight. And now this would, letter has to be addressed be, completely to zoning. If you could allow me to finish, I will certainly not speak over you. I would ask okay, you I to apologize. speak over myself. <clears throat> you would certainly be uh, in a position to tell the Conservation Commission or the Planning Board, who or whomever you're speaking with, on the fifth, sort of the position of the board. Let them let them know where you are, that you have been heard, that the that there may or may not be objections. Allowed to give a status at a minimum. Mm -hmm. In the intervening month, while you're digging up the piece of paper authorizing you, I would also ask you to cure that. While the legal notice went out for a variance, the application is for a special permit for some reason. So again, that's just kind of a, an, an error oh, in, in form here. So my suggestion to you is to cure that to just redo your application as a variance rather than a special permit. Okay. Again, I was informed to do it as a special permit. So. Understood. They're, look, they're, they're mis I'm, I'm yeah, not about making, making a mistake either. I'm just suggesting yeah. that the problem that we have before us is something that can be easily cured. Yes. Okay. <clears throat> um, so when we leave here tonight, does, will this be continued? And we yes. do the application, I won't have to do another legal notice and all that. Right. Okay. Well, the notice went on as a variance. Didn't. Nope. Special permit. It didn't. Uh, I thought I read it. No, it said that it's a variance is requested. It's requesting a variance. You know <laughs> what it was? It was I right. do apologize That's for the error. So it was the fact that the homeowner signed that <laughs> application, okay. Okay. Uh, which led me not to realize it needed a separate letter. Where other applications, he wasn't on the so he wasn't on the application, but we had a letter. So that's how it worked. That's the thing that was confusing me is all the between the three. Departments I'm dealing with here, everybody's doing it slightly different, you know, and it's uh, oof. yep, it shouldn't surprise you that you're not the first petitioner to fall into this, uh, this quagmire. So it, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a story that we have certainly heard in the past. So, if we could, why don't we proceed with what the what the project looks like, what you're asking for, Mr. Anshul? Okay, basically, what I'm asking to do is uh, a self with there's going to be some grading and tree removal involved. The grading is minimal. We, we spent a lot of time uh, placing the pool in the, in the area of the absolute least disturbance. Uh, the grading would be a total of probably about a foot and a half. It's a relatively small project. We're talking about 400 and about 440 square feet, 448 square feet of footprint on it. It's a small pool. It has a, an overhanging cantilever decking, which brings the whole structure up in total uh, surface area of about 600 square feet. Uh, we have complied a complete maintenance uh, program for planning. Uh, we've got a we've got a grading plan here. There's not everything's going to come back to the natural grade. We've come to agreement with conservation on what trees can come out and what should stay. Uh, we've worked it pretty pretty good. With the we're trying to uh, to not disturb as as much as possible, uh, but there's no other place on the property this could go. So that's why that's why I'm here for zoning, uh, and the fact that the building inspector considers it a permanent, a new permanent structure. Well, the building inspector is confined by the code, and, yeah. a, and a pool is within the definition is defined as a structure. A structure is defined as a pool, mm -hmm. so he doesn't have any discretion there. It was a town meeting that stuck you with that definition. Mm. The, uh, but that's basically it. It's, it's, it's a small project, and we're taking great care, obviously, going through this to do it right. You know? uh, we don't want to disturb the area. We realize that it's in the watershed. We realize that we don't want to be able to affect the drinking water in any way whatsoever. I think we're actually two, uh, 3 .9 mile, uh, 2 .9 miles from the, from the lake. Uh, we did do a hydrology uh, re report on it. We've done full wetlands reports. We've had it delineated. Uh, we've done pretty much everything we can, you know, uh, except get the right letter, apparently, which I will do that, uh, tomorrow, as a matter of fact. How much of it's in the watershed, all of it? Uh, pretty much everything on this property is in the watershed. The property predates 1984. I guess that makes a, a difference in what can be done and what can't be done. How far are you within the no desert? Uh, you're 50 feet within the no 
build? Uh, yeah, as far as conservation is concerned, we're, we're, we're in the 50 foot no build outside the 25 no disturb. Okay. The, right, I'm trying to see that. The area is completely fenced in. Everything we're doing is inside the fence. The fence uh, is, a, is a physical barrier on the 25 foot no disturb. Are they requiring you to put special chemicals in the pool as well because it's... No. No. All we need, all we, what you really need to do with it is, is, swimming pools really require very, very small amounts of chlorine. So you just need to, to have a plan if you want to drain it to, you know, let it dissipate, that sort of thing. So that's all in the maintenance plan. So they have, conservation has that in there? Yeah. Okay. And plan. If it breaks in the hole. Yeah. The structure that the homeowners chose. I had an above ground pool, my dog decided to go swimming in the broke. It's different. The, uh, the homeowner is pretty sensitive to the situation that's in the watershed and has gone to the point of spending a lot more money than he needs to to put in a swimming pool. The pool, he's, the pool that he uh, is purchasing can't come down unless it's taken down. It can't be, it's, it's completely different than, first of all, it's rectangular for one thing, but it's completely different than around an oval pool where it's not structurally supported by the water. So the, ch the chance of a wall tearing in the pool, in the pool bursting doesn't It doesn't exist. have a liner? It has a liner, and a liner can leak, no doubt about it, but it can't burst. Oh, that ha it was slats. So it can't allow a lot of water out at one point. Right, that's what know? I had was a slat yeah. pool. Kind of went Because I'm right on Rocky Brook, I'm on conservation as well. So. Yeah. So the idea is to put a structure together that can't let go. Now everything's got a liner, so it can, it can leak. But at least you can control that. And if it starts to leak, you know it. You can pump, and that sort of thing. So we're taking, we're taking the homeowner especially is taking pains to, to do this the right way. But I don't have the proper letter. So. You sure? Yeah. You sure? You're positive. <laughs> I do. There's a letter here somewhere. There's just so many papers. He did sign a letter. Huh? We'll take a second and look, because yeah. that can save you a month. Yeah, you can take, uh, this is general can stuff. We, can so I had to go over, and Bouye, Robert Bouye. See, I just got so many papers here on this. Um, look, could we? I think the board has broad discretion. Pardon me? Peter. Peter Devenow is the owner of the company that I work for. Ah, uh, here we go. Oh, look at that. Look at that. I took this one. Look at it. Look at that. Well, yeah, look at that. They're all white. You know? I know. <laughs> color code. You got to start color coding. That's well, the best that's letter ever. <laughs> yeah, isn't it? <laughs> I believe you. Do you want to pass it around just to I see it? Just see it. Uh, he went through this effort, so you have, have to take the time to read it. He is a professional. What do you say? Should you make a copy of that so it's here in this it's file? It's not even a photocopy. Oh, we're taking. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, that is mine. Okay. Yeah, I was just showing you guys. Okay. So can you get? Is that yours? Is that for you? Well, you, you can have you that. Have that. That's I my copy, but I. Why would you make a copy that way? I've got a desk. Right? That is disgraceful, and everything on it's white, so I can't find anything. So I'm putting, trying to keep things in folders, and in this case, I got more folders than. <laughs> but I'll tell you, North Andover is teaching me some stuff. <laughs> we like to teach. They're teaching me patience. <clears throat> Only if you have a gas station. <laughs> So there is just, just to be like clear, it. there is. It, it doesn't appear that there is a. Um, there's not a location on the site where you could put this without needing relief. Much more, much more uh, work as well. Maybe, the, maybe this this western nook right on right on Dale Street. That certainly wouldn't be an attractive. Yeah, there's not actually an attractive location. <laughs> there's actually a sewage uh, easement down there. Some, oh really? Yeah. Now if you're looking at. Oh, that I see, now I see it, the existing the plan, sewer. That's over there. Uh, the pair consultant. Uh, Framingham did look at it and suggest one other location, but I'm working that out with him now because he looked at it without elevations and put it on the top of a hill. We'd have to cut out that whole hill to put that thing in there. So that's the other thing I'm working with on the, with the planning board. We'll resolve that. 
So give, give a little perspective on that one. So in my understanding is the project as proposed, there'd be about, I think I heard you say there'd be about one foot of about grading. About one to one and a half foot of grading. And if you and put it on top of the hill, what would that? Oh, tons. Ball, ballpark. Uh, minimum of four feet. We require a couple of retaining walls as well. Okay. It's uh, not very practical. <laughs> We've planned this, uh, we've really planned this to be the least disturbance. The, the, the structure of the pool, I could sh start showing you mechanical drawings on the pool and that sort of thing. Uh, but basically, uh, there's no buttressing in the structure. So what, what, the pool's designed to actually use the smallest footprint possible so that we can cut this right in to the grade and then backfill against the grade. So that reduces the size. Basically, it's, it's, 99.9% .9 of this is just the water itself. Uh, it'll be cut into the grade, backfilled against the grade there, and then followed out with the natural grade on the high side of the pool. So we're just going to kind of blend it right in there. The, uh, there is some tree removal that has to be done, obviously, but we've worked that out with conservation, which ones we'll take out and which ones we'll leave. And just so that we say it out loud, the, fo the footprint of the pool, I heard you saying it was relatively small, it's 16, 16 by 28. Uh, it's a 16 by 28 pool. I think that's a what, 448 square foot footprint. Holds a relatively small amount of water, it's 12,000 gallons. Cogitating on any other comments, questions, concerns? I don't know what that word means, so you can put no. it in English. Well, I am concerned. It's too bad it takes them so long to do it. Got anything to say? <laughs> that simple. <laughs> yeah. this, Would anybody this, like to see a picture of the pool? This, this is. Is that a. Uh, sure. Do you have yeah, it this, handy? Oh, <laughs> maybe. Do we which need folder might have? Is, is that's it white? The white table? Boy folder. <laughs> So I, I, I'd agree with you, Alan, that this is no, a, this is a, a complicated part of the code oh, yeah, that under hopefully here. in the, the, the bylaw review that is theoretically coming I mean, up in the next couple of years, this is something. Pool, and you know, I'm trying to say it's an act of Congress. Yeah. This well, picture here is well, not... Well, if, if it's not on the watershed, it's... This is I, somewhat just, similar I get, to what I get, we'll be doing, except there'll be a lot more trees around it. Yeah, North Andover's got trees. North Andover's got trees. So this is the slab, right? Yeah. I have one. Just out of curiosity, did they want to go above ground? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Trying to go in ground would be good. Mm -hmm. It'd be kind of nice. The, uh, they could do it, I suppose, but it'd be a huge project. A God, lot of leveling, a lot of regrading, a lot, a lot of work. And probably, when you get right down to it, they didn't know it at the time, they'd probably never get them fly. You know, I, did, I, could, I couldn't see the planning board letting that go through when they was concerned about this. So it was my understanding that at one point a structure an above ground was not considered a structure in that bylaw, but that has since changed? What I read today is that the Correct. pool's a structure. Yeah, it's I guess it the, was changed. Definition. I was told initially that the, it, was it wasn't. It was, a, uh, it was a pool. But once Correct. it became an accessory structure, I guess that changed. Mm -hmm. uh, which is happening more and more, you know. The truth of the matter is no when you get right down to it, it's a nuts and bolts structure that can come apart. But oh, so is a house. Yeah. It's always a house, right? I mean, <laughs> is that going to an extreme? Yes. Okay. okay. Any further questions for the applicant? I see nobody, but I'll say it anyway. <laughs> Any, anybody here that wishes to be heard? Seeing and hearing none. I mean, more to close the public comments. <laughs> Thank you, Alan. I'll second that. Second motion made and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Unanimous. All opposed? No. no. No one is opposed. That being the case, board deliberations doesn't, uh, this does not feel like anything that I need to discuss any further. You know but what, that's just my thought. I'm going to agree with you. 
Well, kumbaya, Madam Vice Chair. You got Weiss me chair. on board if it matters. All right, then, is there a... What? She's assembling. One moment, please. I need three or something. I kept my hands to myself. My, my well, a me too moment here, right? We're, we're looking at the clock. What are you waiting for? Okay. I'll make a motion. We already closed it? We did. So I will make a motion to grant, hmm, excuse me, um, petition in front of us for Jay Henshaw speaking on behalf of the owner from the. Um, <laughs> Rob With Boy the letter to support Rob Boyer. Is that? Her prop, oh, yeah, property located at 35 Dale Street, Matt 37D, lot 0041, not the end of a mass, 0184 in the R1045, excuse me, in the R1 zoning district to grant a variance <clears throat> from section 4.136.3 CII for construction and above ground pool in the R1 zoning district under section 4.136 watershed, watershed division, protection division, Three uses requirements C I I three whatever, and I am going to reference the letter from <laughs> Mr. Bouyer, and I'm going to also reference the P F S land surveying dated um, March twentieth, two thousand eighteen, as well as is there a difference? Or do I just have two because I'm special? You are special, Madam Vice Chair. It was a, uh, it was an amended plan because, again, everybody does things a little different. One department wanted it as, as the uh, BVD. They're both dated the same date. I don't see a revision on it. No, uh, I think if you look at the line, let me see, it might be something as simple as this. Uh, one department wanted it labeled as a BBW, another department wanted it labeled as an upper stroke, so we had to do it. Uh, what do we got here? Disturbance line. Oh, you get two copies of the same That's because I'm special. <laughs> Just clarify that. Um, is there anything else in here that I need to reference? I don't um, think so. That's it. I would just okay. su suggest a condition regarding the uh, okay. application. That it's approved by conservation and planning. No, no, that would just get us to a variance. Oh, just huh, get a variance, I really variance application. Yeah. Um, I really don't care, she says. <laughs> what they say. Um, why? What do you want me to reference that the application should be under a variance, not special permit? I think this is just paperwork. Our, our trade is paperwork, Madam Vice Chair. I'm just going to reference that this should be under special a variance, not special permit. But the legal notice was correct in noting that it was a variance. Okay, Is there a second? I'll second it. Motion made and seconded. Call the roll. Alan. Aye. Yes. <coughs> yes. And aye. So unanimous approval. Thank you. Motion carried. The <laughs> <laughs> You're almost wow. done. I still have three more meetings. Yeah, unless they have to come tomorrow night, which means four. Here's I don't know. Because they're not going to close it until planning gets to it. So I can't go to planning until the fifth. So we're, well, we're no, just, there's no planning next week. Excuse me, Mr. Henshaw. If, if, if you, if you guys don't mind, we're just going to close this. We're only going to be another two or three seconds, sure. and then you guys can, can handle it. Uh, and then the last item on the agenda is just correspondence from Mass Housing dated April 5th, 2018. I think those are all the matters before the board. That is. Is there a motion to adjourn? I would make a motion to adjourn. I'll second. Motion made and second. All in favor. Aye. 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 We are adjourned.